Hello out there, it's Wednesday. Welcome back to Recon Knowledge Presents Outlaws of Alkenstar, a show where Pathfinder enthusiasts play through your favorite adventure paths. I'm your GM, Steve, and I'm joined by Ricardo, Richard, Nina, and Tommy. Go ahead, everyone, and say howdy, outlaws. Howdy! The outlaws. Hi, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> everybody joining us for the first time welcome and everyone who's been with us before welcome back we're happy to see you again before we get going you might be noticing something a little different look at all of our new overlays Woo. Uh, these are courtesy of ricardo who spent uh the last week putting this together um as a sort of what would you call it you said it was like an anniversary celebration thing yep a man of many words <laughs> But yeah, this is an anniversary celebration thing. Uh, they looked really nice, and we got this sort of like rust. I think it was Richard that said, or Tommy, when you guys first said that the rust use got to our overlay, and it definitely has. If you look, everything's all rusty. So uh, it carries on the theme from here and in the other screens. So thank you, Rick, for doing that. It looks really, really cool, and I, I love the new sort of feel as in book two. It, it just changes it up just a little bit, so that's cool. Let's move on to our announcements. Our first announcement for the night, the night, sorry. This episode is sponsored by the Rollsmith. Rolling, 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 rolling. I would get up these real dice and roll them for a joke, but they wouldn't compare. This week, the Rollsmith released some new dice that you guys, I, I don't know how to say it, you guys have to check it out. In conjunction with the newly released Foundry VTT 5e module, A House Divided, the Rollsmith has released this really cool stylized dice set that pairs with that adventure. So let me come over here so you guys can see it. It features some really new cool glow features that cause the dice to look like they glow in the dark. Uh, why don't you guys do me a favor? Why don't you guys go ahead and just do some rolls so that the, uh, the audience can kind of see what the dice look like. Um, this is just the base dice set right here. You can see they have a little bit of a gothic you know, Victorian look to them. Um, it's perfect for your gothic adventures and characters. But really, the coolest feature about these dice is the new glow feature that caused them to look like they glow in the dark. So I'm going to come into here and I'm going to edit this folder containing our scene to let it know that we want to see glow in the dark. And then I'm going to pick a cool traditional glow in the dark color. So now if you guys roll your dice again, we're going to see... I set this folder to be this kind of tealish blue. You should see the same glow effect on the dice when they roll. And ooh, look at that. They glow in the dark. It's entirely too cool. It's very cool. And uh, one of the things that's really cool with this is in A House Divided, the module that they are sort of licensed for, it will react and glow differently depending on which scenes you're currently in and what part of the module you're currently exploring. Whatever scene's activated, it'll do different things. And for that module... It's more than just like a base color. It can do like colors that like alternate between colors in like one roll because it's tied so close to the module. It's just very cool. So as you progress through different areas of the story, the glow will match the scenes. But for us in our home game, you can do it yourself and uh, give the ability to make the dice glow in whatever color you want. All you need to do is make sure your scene is wrapped in a folder. Put the word glow in the title of the scene and set the folder color and that will change the color of the glow. So if you have a collection of scenes that you want to glow in a different color, you can do that. So to help us choose, Ooh, look at that. We've got five subs going on. Uh, an anonymous gifter is gifting five subs to the chat. Thank you, anonymous gifter. And it looks like we almost got a sub twain going. So get the subs rolling while we're getting started. That's really cool. To help us choose the best color to guarantee you get the best dice rolls, we're going to go ahead and use a very scientific method to choose what color you should use. So I'm going to do our normal roll off, right? Each player is going to choose a color they want to represent their rolls. They're going to roll using that color glow. And whoever gets the highest roll starts with an extra hero point for tonight's session. And as usual, if you are able to roll a natural 20, we will give a hero point to the entire cast in addition to the hero point you earn yourself. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And whatever color wins, that's the color you got to set. You got to beg your GM to set for the dice roll glow 
in your world. So that is science. That is how science work. That is exactly how science works. We don't have to repeat it. We don't have to do a blind test or review. You just say things and that's science. This is the world we live in now. On Twitter.com. So. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to mix it up. Usually I go left to right. I'm going to go right to left this time. So Tommy, what color would you like to represent? And I know I said green, and I thought green, but now there are lots of other colors, and I'm I'm stuck in decision paralysis. This is the struggles of my life. Yeah, I guess still green, but I'm probably gonna want to change next time. I wanted to see your hair color. Okay, uh, somewhere between blue and purple, then. Ricardo said, Ricardo made the decision for me, and I appreciate that. All right, somewhere between blue and purple. Tommy, go ahead and start off with the first roll. So I have it on good authority. My hair color is. Something, something, science giving me a 20. And nope. <laughs> science is dumb. That is not, that is only a six, unfortunately. Well, that sets the bar. There's still a chance you could win with that. Uh, <laughs> I watch Twitch is redeeming that we all stretch. So uh, everyone get your muscles worked in. We got a lot to go. All right. There's a hydrate in there too. Oh, there's a hydrate? I missed the hydrate. We got a hydrate too. Richard, what color would you like to represent? I'm pretty sure... That what I understood in the chipmunkish voice was that he wants red. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Five more subs coming in. We got a level four sub train complete. Amazing, Woo! guys. Choo -choo! Keep it going. Keep it going. Uh, oh, look at that. 17 with the red glow. Red is canonically, scientifically better than somewhere between blue and purple. All right. Rolling down the list. Rick, what color would you like to represent? Give me a teal blue color. Teal green, teal blue. All right. We got a teal color coming in. Go ahead and roll to see if you can beat a 17. We're really looking for that natural 20. Mm -mm. I... Oh. Ha! I did it! I beat someone! <laughs> so in the list, we have chipmunk red. We have somewhere between purple and blue. And we have tealish green. Nina... It all comes down to this. Can you take the hero point and the title? What color are you feeling? Orange, like the sunset. Orange, like the sunset. The sunset in Alkenstar? No. Or the sunset? You gotta get all the smog. It's important. It's like red. <laughs> <laughs> Not forest yeah, let me fire, put the, sunset. <laughs> let me put oh, the smog God. filter on. All right, we got an orangish sunset glow. Nina, can you take the title away? Let's go. I believe in you. No, I can't. I didn't. You cannot. You got, in fact, you got last <laughs> place. I take second. Role. Science you did. You got yep. second with a six. All right. We've scientifically proven 100% you should go with Chipmunk Red if your GM allows it. And that will get you the best rolls. Richard, you start with an extra hero point tonight, courtesy of the Rollsmith. The Rollsmith. It has to be Ooh. Chipmunk Red, though. Not regular Red. Chipmunk Chip Red. Chipmunk red has such disturbing connotations. Is chipmunk red like like Dale's vest from Chip and Dale? I guess I landed on roadkill. <laughs> roadkill, you yeah, yeah. Well, so anyways, thanks to the Roll Smiths for sponsoring tonight's bonus hero point. And up next, we want to thank our second sponsor for the night, Molten Hosting. Molten Hosting. They're so Molten Hosting provides Foundry VTT hosting in the cloud so that your games always run smooth. Make sure to check them out at MoltenHosting.com. It's the service we use on our show, and we urge you to use them for your game too. And like we say every week, remember, at checkout, you can use the code RECALLKNOWLEDGE. One word. One word. One word. It's just one word, guys. And, at, and you will get your first month of service completely for free, no matter what tier you're subscribing to. Thanks, Molten Hosting. Normally, we do a big Molten Hosting gag on the top. Not tonight. Tonight was for this awesome Rollsmith dice. Whew. We're about halfway through our announcements, guys. We're not going to play any Pathfinder tonight. <laughs> now we're just going to talk about dice and shit. No, but I do have an announcement before we get going, like a real announcement, which is um, I am happy to announce that this year I will once again be taking part in the Foundry VTT Pathfinder 2E Dev Extra Life Charity Stream nice. to help raise money for children's hospitals. Tim, the project lead from the PF2E system, will be jamming us through one of the dark archives case files. 
I will be playing and I'm going to be joined by Cora and Cody from the Foundry team directly, as well as Blake from Archives of Nethys. Oh, nice. The man himself. Nice. The man himself. Yeah. So it's, it should be a really super fun time. We are playing uh, this year on Saturday, November 21st at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, your donations can kind of help influence the streams in fun ways, like turning our natural ones into natural 20s. Or in Cody's case, you can turn Cody's natural 20s into natural ones. And then we're, there's also going to be a lot of raffle prizes that Tim is putting in and some other people are throwing in, including me. I'm going to be throwing up some sessions that you can win, donate, and then I'll run a session for you and your friends and, you know, Pretty see fun. where it goes. Steve's not bad. He's like, <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. But uh, mark your calendars. Come check us out. November 21st, 9 a.m. Pacific time. I can't tell you what your local time zone is, but I'm sure you can figure it out. <laughs> Steve lacks the omnipotence. <laughs> <laughs> we need to know the time in every time zone, Steve. Yeah, just list them all <laughs> Okay, and some time zones is at 10 a.m. And some time zones is at 11 a.m. And some time zones is at noon. Three Other hours time zone, later. It's at 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> As well, last last real announcement. Uh, I had to share this because it was kind of last minute, but it was really awesome. Lost Omens Impossible Lands launches on November 16th. Uh, as a Paizo subscriber, I managed to snag my copy early, the PDF copy early today. I barely had a chance to scratch the surface, but it's got such awesome Alkenstar lore in it that if you're enjoying the city and you're enjoying the story that we've been telling and all that fun stuff, you're definitely going to want to pick it up. The book itself details the entire Impossible Lands region, but it devotes 45 of its pages just to Alkenstar region itself and 16 pages on Alkenstar city as a, a, a primer just on the city itself. Dang. So uh, it's really cool. And every time I read it, I'm like, oh man, there's so much awesome stuff. We learned some interesting tidbits, like there apparently Alkenstar is 93% dwarves. So I really like that because I like fixing the setting that it's not just, ah, oh, humans, and then whatever the hell. But we've also joked so much in this game about how big Saruk is compared to everything else in Alkenstar. I feel like that <laughs> disparity is doing this. Mm -hmm. That's true, yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, and there's some other stuff in there around, like, coffee and things that we've, we were saying, hey, look, this fits exactly the lore we sort of set for ourselves just randomly. So it's kind of cool. I want to say Paizo watched and willed that into the canon. That's my head mm -hmm. cannon on that. They would have like wrapped it right around the time we were doing the prequels, I imagine. So see, we influenced it. I have to check. Do we have our character names in there? No, I don't think so. Control F Majagua. All those showing up everywhere is why it's why there's dwarves everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, make sure to grab your copy from Paizo or from your friendly local game store as soon as it launches. Again, launches on November 16th. All right. I think I've annoyed you guys enough with all my morning announce, not morning announcements. God, what is this school? Rick, you want to start up a dance party for us? Wait, I can't take my headphones off. Hey, DJ, DJ. All right. That's going to do it for announcements, viewers. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead, sit back, and relax, and players. Let's jump into episode three of Outlaws of Alpha Star Cradle of Court, written by Scott D. Young. <laughs> Let's go!
camera fades in over a worn down workshop on the western edge of Alkenstar. The laboratory and workshop of one Alamen Kosawano, who is currently missing, having been chased out of town by a Ambrose Muglin and a mysterious gang dressed in gold and black. Are they the Gilded Gunners? Are they the Bumblebees? We may never know the answer to such mystery. Alas, the camera pushes in through the the sheet rusted sheet metal roofs down the light streaming in to see our outlaws in tow two new faces one a young child by the name of jo Jonai. it's a weird word to say like Jon jonia i guess <laughs> yeah jonia maybe holding a pet cat named masu with a big oversized hourglass collar who is Kosawana's pet. And you guys last week uncovered some of the mysteries, some weird clockwork devices, some times that are set to 227, and a copy of a holy text, The Logic of Design, which is the holy text of the Temple of Bri, with a bookmark set between 226 and 228. Passage 227 is conspicuously missing from within its pages. And as we kind of come in on that, you guys have just sort of like demolished an entire swarm of little clockwork rat type creatures that had gone haywire after being spilled in chemicals. And that's where we pick up this week on Cradle of Courts. Players, the scene is yours. We're going to open up the rest of these doors. Maybe I should just poke my head in and take a look. And if there's any more of these chemicals, we can uh, just close the door again. Yeah, is everybody ready? A quick glance to see if anyone's got any clockwork piranhas stuck to them still. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm good to go. I would love to join you, but my movement collides with the beast one wall. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead and position yourselves wherever uh, you'd like to be in the situation. I'll switch over the battle map just so the People at home can get a sense of our layout. So you guys have sort of, you came in the back, right? You came into the loading dock, came up into this big space, started poking around. Uh, there was a clockwork creature of some sort that came to life and tried to defend the workshop. Immediately was put down. Uh, Reficule had kind of gone around with his firearm and poked into some sandbags until a weird little clockwork creature flew out and then self-destructed as it died been clearing one room at a time in a very methodical very methodical ah yes the story of when we cleared the room <laughs> logically <laughs> what Hal's talking about is this next room on the list which you guys have not yet opened there is another door here the little staircase kind of goes up just a bit from the sunken recessed workshop floor up to what appears to be a beat up looking flimsy wooden door Hal goes ahead and opens it as you peer in, what you see is this room's walls. Well, that's happening. You just see Anita trying to climb up Y, but then eventually. <laughs> yeah. So the how you peek in really quick, the room's walls are lined, ceiling, lined to the ceiling with shelves overflowing with metal ingots, spare parts, clockwork components, assorted junk. It looks like a storage room, which is all kinds of junk. Teetering stacks of metal pipes, rods, and gears balanced precariously against the shelves. The window in the eastern wall is completely boarded up from the inside, and there's so much junk between you and it, you couldn't even get to it even if you wanted to. Um, it does look like somebody has recently kind of come through and tossed the place as well. Can you make a secret perception check for me? Oh. Can I secretly well, okay. clue him in? <laughs> you can. Secretly clue him in. That's fine. Hasha. Strix's trying to see through the door, but is also pivoting the portable ballista that he carries. Perception. Well, the plus one circumstance bonus. Not very well hidden. In fact, you're not sure if it's intended to be hidden at all. But there is a sort of clockwork creature in the northeast corner of the room, kind of near the pile of junk that's pushed up against the window. 
you can see it looks like a wood and brass clockwork construct and it's it's sort of like looks like it's dragging itself into the piles and it looks like it's trying it basically looks like it's trying to, to dig itself into the piles away from you and hide from your view but you can immediately get clued in you and Saruk pick it out of this room immediately there's another uh clockwork robot in here like uh the one that Reficule blew up a little bit ago. Uh, it's kind of cut in half, kind of drag his way, but including Miss Anita, there are all kinds of extra parts in here. Ooh. Should you really want to take a look? Yes. But this robot's in the way. Is it what? Is it just watching you? Or, or is it attacking? I, I haven't stepped in yet, so let me see if it attacks when I step in. I can't get out of why, but you step in and you watch as this creature has now sort of burrowed its way deeper into the pile and then it's turned itself around so only its face is sitting there within the pile and it's like looking right at you but it's trying to remain motionless so you don't recognize it being there but you've rolled high enough in your perception that you are completely aware of this guy and he's not hidden to you at all can I like crafting to recall knowledge about what we're looking at? Yeah, you can give me a recall knowledge crafting check. Oh, oh no, another one that we're you taking. You're so home. adorable. I hate <laughs> to kill you. Or probably adopt you, real talk. Okay, let me make a <laughs> bungee <laughs> roll. Watch out. It looks weird. It looks like it's definitely got clockwork origins and it's definitely a clockwork creature. But just looking at it, it looks kind of beyond anything you've seen and you're not entirely sure what it is there's no doubt that it's base form is clockwork in some way but there's something more to this that you can't quite put your finger on so then in common then wongi do you understand me you hear like coming out of this sort of, there's like this like staticky voice and it's like scared please do not hurt me Man, this is like the fourth time this has come up. I know it doesn't proc here, but I'm just going to keep clicking. No cause for alarm. It's all right. We're not going to hurt you if you're not going to hurt us. Sure. Make a diplomacy check. You're really good at diffusing situations. I am. Out of character, I really, really thought I would never use that. I'm using it so much. Come up quite a bit. Yeah. Ooh, shiny. It's the best looking natural three you've ever seen in your whole life. <laughs> three on the <laughs> dice, 14 total. Uh, that is that is uh, a failure, so it actually does not like kind of work. You're unable to. Uh, all you, all you say by saying that is like you seem to heighten it more, and it's like scared. Go away! I don't want to hurt you, and we I don't want off. you to hurt me. Sir, so start backing up. I can't. My foot is stuck on the freaking why but I God, I can't get out. <laughs> right. And I'll go over there. I'll, I'll go over there and I'll help Annie down. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so you help her off of Wybert, no problem. You, you start walking towards it and it, it goes. It's like, worried. I'll bite your feet off if you don't go away. I'll kick you off if you try to bite me, though. Threatening. I will destroy you. I'm here. Calmly. Where's your maker? Make a diplomacy check. I don't know if it's been 10 minutes since I did this last, but I'm going to do a clue in. I've got my pistol drawn behind Saruk. Uh, 22? Just out of the way. 22, very nice. So, Anita, you're able to sort of calm it down a little bit. It was in an unfriendly sort of state, and you've kind of taken it from unfriendly to sort of neutral. <laughs> And it sort of stops being scared a little bit. I pull out a... Curious. Like a... Who are you? My name's Anita Kieran Ulysses Mendoza. And then I pull out like a little uh, tube of oil that's like a pipette. Could I? Just on your gears. I know I see that you're missing a couple parts. Curious. Oh, yes. My legs are killing me. Perhaps you can help. You have no legs. I mean, 
it's true. You you kind of like see him shift in his thing. His legs are completely missing. He's just has like an upper half of his body and he's been crawling around. He has no legs on him right now. You have no legs, friend. Maybe uh maybe you can look around here and find him and like connect them for him. Sad. Carry- oh, oh, they are broken. It's okay. Master will fix me. Is your master Olaman? Happy. Yes, that is my master. Did you lose your legs when the when the bumblebees came? Confused. Bumblebees? The robbers? The humans. Three humans with silver gilded guns. Confused. Yes, I did not know that they were bumblebees. That's what they're called. Thank you. Information filed. All right, but you were here. Did you see Oliman recently? We're trying to look for him. Yes, Master Oliman. He was here last night before they smashed me. Bad noises. Oh, sorry. Did you and Master Oliman come here from a house, maybe? Or were you? did you always reside here at his workshop? Proud. This is my home. Uh, Isn't it clean? Mm. And he looks around and you just see like, eh, 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 eh. must clean. Error, unable to locomotive. Error code three, one, six. Four, zero, four. <laughs> Are his legs anywhere? <laughs> uh, yeah, if you guys would like, you can give me a uh, perception check to search around for his legs, Hal, <laughs> why, why they're talking. Yeah, come back in now that it's obvious. I'm not going to make it worse. You can say. Nice. Oh, look at that. That's fine. It didn't have to be secret, Hal, but that's good. That it's it's fine that you did it. But I will now reveal that since you rolled it a secret, you got a natural 20. Yes! Sorry, I need to get that out of my vocabulary. Woo! You do. You really do. <laughs> So as you f- as you go around and you find you find a set of legs, it looks like a, a, someone basically took a shotgun blast to his midsection and oh. tore him clean in half. His legs have been completely dismantled and crushed, and they are definitely there, but they are not like a plug and play situation. This is going to be a hefty amount of repair to get him into a state that could actually walk. And then uh, as you pull him up, and then he's talking to Anita, and he says. Sad. I don't have much time left. Master must wind me. Are his keys anywhere or anywhere in the, inside this room? Uh, going off of the 23 from Saruk and the 29 from Hal searching the room, there's no sign of the wind up key anywhere. So then, if they are clockwork, do they have a key on their back or. So generally what, what the way that they are built is they have a key kind of hole and it's like the master, whoever kind of creates them or controls them has a special key that fits that bot. And then you basically would twist it. But if you look on his back, he's got the spot where you would wind him, but he's got no key in it right now. Well, we don't have the key, but I don't know. Anita, you think you can figure it out? I think I'd need more than a couple minutes, maybe a day to to get him winded up again. Or something temporary right now, just a quick fix. Yeah, hang on. Take my repair tools out and see if I could figure something out with the stuff that's lying around here. Yeah, you can attempt it, it, you can attempt this. It's a crafting check. I'll put the you can do a crafting check. It is it, it this is going to take more time than you might realize. Like you know like you're basically making this is it's pretty tough. But if you attempt it, it's going to basically take like an hour of your free time to do it. It's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's not not to do it, but just realize it's an hour of Anita like to attempt this check. Do we have an hour to, you know, to use up? Is it that, that's how long it would take me to figure out a key. We're kind of squatting right now. Right. I don't think we should be spending a whole hour here. We're technically in a crime scene. We are the crime scene. Friend, do you have a name? Confused. Name? I guess I've never thought about it before. What is your identifier? 
I guess if I had an identifier, it would be sweep up. Oh. Because that is what Master says to me most. I see. What does he know about the clocks? I yell in from outside the room as I'm keeping an eye on the other stray that we've adopted. You heard my partner. What do you know about the clocks? Confused. Clocks? Let me take a look. <laughs> he begins trying to like crawl himself very slowly across the workshop. I'm going to reach an arm down. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, you guys can reach down and pick it up. Pick him up. That's fine. He, you take him over to the clocks and he sees and he's like, sorry, I don't know. Thinking, thinking. Master told me to go greet our guests. I did not see what he did after that. How do you usually greet your guests? Happy. Hi. What can I do for you? Okay, so not hurting them. Confused. I am not programmed for violence. Though I do often dream of it. <laughs> Concern. I am concerned by that statement. <laughs> I like this one more now. I bet you do. <laughs> we'll talk about whether or not you dream, apparently, later. How much time do you have before you power off, do you know? Checking. Checking. 93 minutes. It's very... Update. Specific. 92 minutes. Okay. Update. 91 minutes. I think I am broke. But fast. He's definitely saying faster than a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think he doesn't really know much. Do you remember Oliver riding off with like a bird cat thing? Thinking. Thinking. Update. 82 minutes. Master Alleman was working in the workshop and there was a bang outside. Scared. I heard humans yelling. Then the th sound of thunder. The master was surprised and he started working faster. Then the master ran to the piles and hid. He told me to greet our guests. When the door opened... Three humans and a small human came in. Happy. Hello. Sad. I went to greet them, and one of them made thunder. And my legs went away. Sad. The guests started looking on all the tables. Then the big door opened, and Master rode his metal cat out of the door and into the air. Surprised! The guests were surprised, and they ran after the master and the metal cat. Scared. Then there was more thunder. After a fractional revolution of my escapement wheel, the humans and small humans returned. They found me again and threw me into that room. I have been on standby, hoping the master will return to wind me. Sad. I would like my legs back, so I can fulfill my duty and sweep up the shop before Master Alleman returns. End of file. Update, 23 minutes. Oh, wow. No. My chakra. How do you feel about all that? I hate to interrupt about, you know, the feeling of this clockwork. But, uh, what pile did uh, Master Alleman go to there, Mr. Sweep Up? He points towards the uh, pile with the clockwork that kind of activated and attacked you guys. Mm -hmm. He was there, and then he was gone. Will my master return? I must sweep up. So can I, maybe rather than asking this, can I, uh... Perhaps sense motive to determine sentience? Sure, yeah. Give me a sense motive check. I need to know if I'm adopting this robot. <laughs> okay. So what you're sensing with this thing is there. there is a sort of a personality a bit more to this than a normal clockwork. Most clockworks can't carry a conversation, can't answer questions, such like that. 
as you've conversed with him and had him sort of express this to you, you do get a sense that this is more than just a clockwork. There is some, maybe not a full personality, a full soul in it, but it's more than just a mindless clockwork. The fact, the fact that he said he dreams of violence. I didn't know if that was like a programmed response or did actually. Jeez. Okay, fair. So I don't know where your master went, and I'm not sure if they're coming back, but we can get you out of here and get you fixed up. Go from there. Sad. No, I must sweep up this shop here. I cannot leave my job. Wait, did, did you say you were called sweep up? <laughs> Agreement. Well, I didn't think about it before, but I suppose that is what I am most identified as. That is what master always says to me. Sweep up. I see. How much time until you're out of juice, buddy? Oh, I have lots of time. Let me check. Checking. 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 One minute remaining. While, while that's happening, I do want to stress that he, that Sweep Up mentioned that the three humans in Muglin came back. So if they're intermittently coming back in it, just to see who, if, if, Oloman is is here. Maybe we should leave. Yeah, let's let's get the shit that we need and go. Yeah, we just got this one door here. Why don't you pick him up and I'll pick him up and we'll take him with us. Maybe he gets right. harder the more he's wound up. Is there Somebody anything in this room like that. that I can use for? Myself? Error, error, entering standby mode. Time to dream. And okay. sweep up just kind of goes completely motionless and stiff. We'll put him out. in Wybert's flight. That's concerning. Oh, there's some padded armor. <laughs> there is a little thing in there. There's some padded armor. It's a plus one padded armor, as a matter of fact. Ooh, let's try this new program that we have. Ah, oh, <laughs> it's on the floor now, God. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. You made it. You made its own item pile right there. So yeah, you you take sweep up. He fits inside Wyvert's butt, no problem. I'm gonna take it. In fact, I wonder if I can mount him on Wyvert. Oh yeah. We just install oh, sweep up into Wybert and then get a weird dual personality. It's like Ferator from MK10. You got sweep up in in Wybert's butt. Um, you can still attempt to make the key if you want. You know, any anytime you were able to get the key made, you could wind him up. Mm -hmm. Oh, his legs too. I do want to bring his legs and make sure that it's in Wybert's trunk. Yeah, his legs look pretty messed up. Is there anything else in this space that we can grab? I, I know we're carrying like six alchemist labs and shit worth of stuff, but also <laughs> like, is there anything in here that we could grab that might be helpful for anything we're doing? Most of the stuff in here looks pretty junky, but there might be like Anita could probably grab you and Anita could probably grab the things you guys need to uh, to maybe assemble a new set of legs for for our sweep up from here. All right, one more and then we get out of here. All right. Yeah. Did we already check that spot that uh, he said Kosawana went to? The pile? Right here? Where that uh, clockwork that you guys triggered went off first. Uh, I believe so. Um, I found... I'm trying to remember if that's where I found the, um, the eight, 80... Yeah, the 80 gold worth of clockwork components and... I think the clockwork components came from this sort of bay down here where the little that really interesting device that made a bunch of noise that Saruk like disconnected, like he disabled it. That was from this nook. This nook up here had the clockwork that you guys fought, a bunch of spare clockwork parts. In fact, uh, there are a couple of the clocks that are set to 227 right in this area where he's that, that same bay is the clockwork. Yeah. Is that where we got the universal solvent as well? Like this part or it was right in here? I think that was down down one, yeah. Okay. Um, we just got a couple of components from there, Ravi. Uh, do you want to check? Just wondering if he hid something there. We could check. I could be missing something. Take another look. Yeah, go ahead and give me a go ahead and move up there. Give a perception check if you're checking that bay, that sort of area. This this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, perception check. 
while that's going on, since it's going to take a minute, Strick's going to pop his head out the door. Just to be entirely sure. Strick, you can give me a perception check as well as you pop your head out the back door. Uh, Refi, you kind of spend like 10 minutes or so kind of tossing the area, looking for anything. Again, more clockwork parts. This is definitely an area where he would assemble a lot of his clockwork devices and stuff. But you don't find anything out of the ordinary or concerning as you search or anything hidden. Uh, just the clocks that are marked 227. And so what, is there something specific you're looking for outside? You're just making sure no one's coming? Just making sure that we still have like the time to be poking around and stuff, yeah. Got it. Yeah, you, you're poking your head out. You're on watch. Uh, the back alley kind of area, businesses, it's like pretty dead, like empty back there. Um, you're pretty sure that if somebody was to walk by, you'd have noticed them. And you kind of glance up and down the street. Other than the occasional like delivery truck passing by, it doesn't appear there's any eyes on the workshop or any interest at the moment. It appears to be clear on this side of the building. Gotcha. So far, so good. Eh, nothing more over here. Just more of these weird clock things. All right, let's get that last door and get out of here. And as I walk by... I look towards Janaya and I just look. He's looking at you him. and he's like petting Masu. I'm bored. I thought we were going. Just give us a second. We want to be thorough. <laughs> yeah. So how you go ahead and open this front door. You basically see like the room might have once served as an outer office of some sort or a reception area for like a business. But it, right now it's like equal parts storage room and junk piles. There is a desk. It's covered with wooden boxes of tools and spare parts. There's all kinds of nails and hooks nailed into the wall in haphazard ways. Everything from like large hammers to small pliers and rotting apples like hanging from the wall. There's wickerwork mannequins like all over, like kind of set, set behind the desk, kind of like a creepy thing. And your heart skips for a moment. You think maybe it's like some sort of weird clockwork creature to come to life, but it, it just sits there menacingly back to you, like kind of facing forward. There is a hand lettered sign that reads that re workshop hanging right over the door as you look up. There is a second mannequin next to a chair and there's a hand sort of scrawled sign that reads water closet heading towards this door to the north. Take my head and head back out. Yeah, you guys can give me perception checks too, sorry. Go ahead. Just, yeah, I'm just gonna do the look. See if there's anything in there that stands out. Yeah, give me those. Anything say 227 on it? You're looking specifically, you know, like anything that says 227. You don't notice anything off the bat. You notice Saruk near that like weird mannequin. There's like a box and there's almost like a weird like sort of magic wand sticking out of it. Mm -hmm. There is like a single like velvet bag sort of tucked across the room that you can notice sort of in some crates, you see a little bit of velvet hanging out. So there is some semblance of like treasure here. But the other thing you notice is in the corner, trying to remain motionless right here is another clockwork creature that looks similar to the one that you fought in the previous room. It's kind of sitting here motionless by the door and it's got its, its eyes like focused straight ahead towards the front door. Um, it doesn't seem to respond to you guys. But you feel like if you went near the front door, it might activate and trip its like programming. It does look beat up and there's like sparks shooting off of its neck. Gotcha. It's looking towards that like door to the north. Oh, oh, <laughs> if you go in the water closet, you get attacked. There's another one of those clockwork sentries in here. Some things that look like they might be worth something. I don't see anything with the investigation, though. <laughs> Strick's gonna step to here. Yeah, here. And try to... I saw the loot thing come up. I was gonna... If it, yeah, yeah. It is I'm truly assuming like you're he trying to be... It. Are you trying to be sneaky? I mean, do I think that the trigger is approach this door or this door? It's hard, because clockwork can be given a single, like, command, right? Whether that's guard the door, or attack anyone you see. Depends on what the command was on this thing, right? That's fair. Okay, so then JK... Ruffy, come here, would you? Right, what do you need? Uh, there's this clockwork thing in here. I'd like you to uh, disable it permanently. The rest of you could as well, I'm at a point where the, wherever the thing is sitting. I'll pull out a bottled lightning. I prepare the backpack, Melissa. <laughs> Pardon me. 
And I'll... I still have my pistol out. I never put it away. Do you think I could get over there without it turning on? I have no idea. Let's see if I can be a little bit quiet about it. I'm going to try to stealth over there. Yeah. We'll start with the assumption that you're hidden from it, right? Because it hasn't reacted to you yet. So we're, we're starting with the assumption it's not aware of you. So you can then sneak up to half your speed and try to get close to it without it noticing you, right? You still need cover or something to kind of give you that ability to not be seen. This table right here, I'm going to go up to there. Yep, no problem. I'm going to do this. Go ahead and make a stealth check for the sneak secret, if you please. And while that happens, I'll just grab an oil can and move it hard enough to make noise, hoping that's enough of a distraction and clue him in. Okay. Yeah, you kind of move up and stay low and crouch behind the edge of the desk. You get to there, Ruffy. It, it hasn't reacted to your positioning at all. He looks, a moment passes and you feel safe. Let's just go for broke. I'm going to try to approach it, I guess. I don't think there's anything to cover me, though, anymore. Yeah, once you leave from here, it's basically going to an initiative roll to see if you beat it, right? Mm-hmm. So in that case, anyone who's, I mean, it seems like everyone could probably go ahead and roll initiative on this. Uh, Refi, why don't you go ahead and roll stealth? If there's nothing, if there's nothing to hide behind, I don't think I'd be stealthing. I think I'd just rush it. True. Yeah. If you want to use a different, a different stat, natural one for Anita, nice. Natural uh, then you one. Can use, you can use perception. Uh, do we get the scouting bonus from how? Oh, yes. right. Hey, I beat the monster. It's true with the bonus. You definitely did. I'm going to use that hero point. Can I use a hero point on, on initiative? I'm going to use that extra hero point that I got then. That's that's a that's lot a better. Bit better. Yes, it is. This thing is sitting there in the corner, just kind of looking ahead, motionless. You jump out from where you are. Refi, you're first. All right. First action. Uh, free action. I would like to stride towards the enemy that I can see using my into the fray. Uh, uh -huh. And then I would like to attempt to uh, wind down this clockwork using thievery. Very good. Okay, that is a two action thing to do. Uh, it will be a thievery check. Go ahead and make that thievery check. Very nice. So uh, that is a... Uh, success so you able to get in there and start winding it down you, you can tell it has like as you wind it down you're taking you can feel the tension right as you're winding it down you know what given the 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 sort of moment and the role and the way you guys have set it up and the way this thing is i'm just gonna say it was already so low on time that you've successfully winded it down nice i think that's nice. reasonable and that's why red dice are the best Mm -hmm. Chipmunk. You basically completely are able to nullify this fight completely. You run out, and before this thing can even start, it starts getting up like it's going to react, sparks shooting out of its neck. You wind it down, and you are able to completely, like, oh, 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 and it just sort of falls over, and its eyes sort of go like flat as it just kind of collapses into a pile, and it will not be uh, fighting you. Nice. Hmm. I like it. Alternatively, you don't have to shoot them. That. I'm legitimately impressed. Just holding the bottled lightning. I'm ready! Ah, oh, situation's handled in here. So here's a question. I don't know if this is a recall knowledge thing or if, like, folks might know it or what, but now that the clockwork is unwound, is it possible, like, I guess I don't know how they get commands input and or if we could like have this thing take orders from us now is short answer. Yes, so it is theoretically possible. You would need to similar to sweep up, you would need to sort of create the, the master key to like wind it. And then when you kind of use the master key, you can input the command that it accepts. Got so. It. If somebody takes some time to fashion a key that works, then you could uh, probably give it a new command. 
Does it have an interesting weapon that I can craft out of it? It has on its arm a repeating crossbow with a magazine attached to it, similar to the last one. Does anyone want a repeating crossbow with a magazine? I'll just kind of step over. If nothing else, it pays room board for a potential stowaway for long term. Said quietly, so Janiah can't overhear us, obviously. Sorry, could you say that again? Kind of broke off on me a little bit. Heck, if nothing else, we can sell it. I don't think Phoebe's going to let the kids stay there for free. All right, sure. Okay, I'll grab the repeating crossbows. Uh, crossbow. Can you loot it off its body or no? Let me see. Yes. Am I encumbered, though? I am. Why? The... <laughs> <Sticking> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the only other doors left that you haven't explored that you're aware of are this door to the north marked water closet and then the front door out of this place. Um, the rest of it appears clear. What else would you guys like to do here? Maybe a little paranoid, but I'm going to go to the front door. I want to first make sure it's not going to bite me when I touch it. And then assuming that it doesn't, I'd like to look around out front again. See this place isn't being watched and stuff. Yep, give me a perception check to look for, you know, anything like dubious about this. So as you look over it, Saruk, you do get the impression that uh, you do find signs that this door is indeed trapped. And you kind of look at the door and you realize it's kind of spring loaded and it's, it's kind of ingenious and it's very well hidden because it goes from the bottom of the door through the floorboards of this place towards the desk. And as your eyes look from the door and look towards the desk, you see the front of the desk, even though it looks like a junk desk, it has these holes drilled in it in various places. Your mind sort of realizes that like, if somebody was to open this door, that it would unleash a hail of something flying out of those holes at the door. And uh, there are signs as you look down um, of signs of dried blood here in the entryway helps lead you towards this conclusion. Well, I'll just assume no one has used the front door based on that, Saruk says out loud to nobody. And then we kick the bathroom door open. Is anyone hiding in here? Oh my god. <laughs> you kick the bathroom door open. Uh, there is not. There is a fairly well-maintained functioning toilet and a running water sink, which is pretty nice for this section of the smoke side. Uh, give me a perception check, though, if you will. Oh, uh, while this is happening, could I do a treat wounds on Hal, Brent, using sure. assurance? Yeah, that's the yeah, 13 CRs, Hal. You look in the bathroom, Saruk, you realize the bar of soap in the bathroom looks almost brand new. Kosawana is not a hand washer after he uses the restroom. I close the door and discuss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's clear. Let's get the hells out of here. All right. Through the back again, or? Yep, let's go. Right. We have definitely overstayed our welcome. All right, you guys go ahead and make your way out the back of this place. Jonia, Jonia is just kind of like, finally picks up Masu, who's like starting to get bored too, and starting to like fly at him, and he's like holding the cat. The cat does not want to go. And he goes ahead and uh, leaves out the back with you guys. You know, you guys are on this back patio. You can see there are signs like where it looks like one of these wooden beams has been like completely busted, like something big flew out the back part of this. And given what you've heard about this sort of clockwork cat type creature, it makes sense that Kosovana would have flown it this way. There are signs that it did and didn't even have enough space. It had to bust these wooden poles just to get out. You take another pier up and down the street. It looks clear. It doesn't look like anyone's looking at you or coming for you. You guys are clear to leave and go wherever you would like to go next. All right, let's uh, let's head back to Phoebe's. Drop everything off. We need to go to the Temple of Bride and find out what this 227 is, or at least break in there and snoop around a bit. Then we can go talk to what's her head. To Mintakos. Mintakos, yeah. All right, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Back to the barrel and bullet? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, so as you guys uh, are making your way across the city, making your way, you know, you guys have spent 
most of the morning on this lead already. Uh, you started at the Temple of Rai pretty early in the morning. Uh, not early, but early for you guys. So as we're kind of getting back to the barrel and bullet, it's pretty much like mid, like to late afternoon. The sun's still up, but you guys have burned through the better part of the day with your investigations and crossing the town and all the searching you've done. We make our way back to the barrel and bullet. Um, it's still early enough that there's a small amount of clientele here, but there's not really that sort of rough and tumble crowd that you know is probably an hour or two from getting off of work before they they come here. I don't know how I got in the kitchen. Ah. You were baking bread. Checking on the bread. Of course. Yeah, I think that was the last time you were, you were baking uh, the bread. It's been a while since we had this uh, this map up. This is true. You bring back jo- Jonia, or Jonia and Masu and Sweet Pups stuff into Wybert's butt. Amazing. What would you guys like to do? So when we come in, I'm going to flag down Phoebe and then like nod to the meeting room. Assuming she's free. She is. Uh, she's like kind of like tending bar. She's getting things ready for the morning. You see, she's kind of going and taking inventory, making sure she has enough stock to get through the rush of the night. When you come in, she kind of curiously eyes you because you come in with like a kid and a cat. And she's like, we don't allow children in the bar. Yeah, I know. We picked up a, a pair of strays pursuing everything we've been doing. I was hoping that, at least for a little while, they could stay here. You can take it out of my pay if it's a thing. She puts her hand up. She kind of looks around. She's like, I was kidding about the no kids in a bar thing, but let's talk. Mm. And she goes ahead and motions you, like, almost like, like, you see, like, you're talking loud. You see, like, nervously, she's almost looking around. You can see Fasirter's over, kind of having a conversation with some other other workers. And at, once you start talking about almost, like, sort of your business and stuff, she just she looks a little nervous, like she doesn't want you talking about it out in the open, especially around Fossierter. Oh, yeah, I had the presumption we were saying this all in the back room. JK. I didn't say it that alone. Yeah, so she goes ahead and, and you guys can go ahead to the, the side room, which is generally like over here. And you can have uh one of your little p- meeting powwows. She's just kind of curious. She like leans in. She goes ahead and uh, puts a shot glass in front of everyone, pours a little bit of whiskey, and just wants the update like so. Where do we stand? We're working on it. Yeah, it's it's a mess, but we're we're getting there. What's with the stray? Like I said, well, like I didn't say, narrative is confusing. We picked them up in in Kosawana's workshop. I was hoping that at least for a little while until we can find something else. The the stray and the stray's cat could stay behind. Put him up here for a little bit. Is he Kosawana's? Not that I am aware. I don't think so. I hope not. I mean, children are good leverage if we needed it. Sir just glares. I mean, not that I would ever do anything to a child. It's just leverage. Leverage? I don't have the time to argue this with you. Can the kid stay here safely? The little scam said he wants to work. Does he now? Does he have any skills? I mean, he is a child. I assume they can. So when Saruk says sweep up, there's probably a hang there. That I don't know <laughs> if I can do in character. You get some extra labor around the bar. They get a place to stay suppose something could be arranged but he's sleeping in your room and uh from my experience people tend to forget that kids are around say things they might not have other said why well, said around other people might be worth looking into he smiled give me a perception check Ruffy. yeah i feel like saruk would probably also pick up on this you can give me a perception check, kind of like a sense motive sort of thing. Kidding, no, I don't have guidance. It's called Clue In! <laughs> nice. Uh, Refi, uh, you don't pick up on anything as you're saying this. You, you see her look at you and kind of nod along. Saruk, the expression that you pick up off of Phoebe as Sir, as uh, Refi explains this to her, it's almost like she's holding back contempt. She knows how to find children and how to manipulate them into doing what she wants. And she doesn't need this guy mansplaining to her how to, like, manipulate children into doing her bidding. She smiles, politely nods, and doesn't really, like, let... She tries not to let it show, but you you pick up the slightest hint. 
And then your brain sort of makes a connection that she's annoyed at Refi for suggesting that she wouldn't understand that already. Wish I could have annoyed her more. <laughs> of course, dear. I assumed you called a meeting because you had an update for me. But if your update is just that you need me to hire this kid. If it helps us achieve our goals, great. You know about Moglin uh, trying to look for Kosawana as well, right? That was the intel we had, that he was there. That's why we decided to take a look. Was there any merit? Did you have any evidence that he was there? Well, the neighbor, and uh, based on the description of the other clockwork device that we had, it, it seems to be that Moglin was there uh, with... I'm not sure if you've heard of them, the Gilded Gunners, or the Bumblebees, as they're popularly known. Definitely the Bumblebees. Did you just say the Bumblebees? That's their the underground Bumblebees. name. Mm. The Bumblebees are boogeymen. They don't exist. They're stories that we tell children to make them sleep tight at night. That checks out. But the Gilded Gunners, though. Unfortunately, yes, with the Gilded Gunners, absolutely. If they are indeed the Gilded Gunners, Muglin must be very desperate. That son of a bitch. <laughs> They're easily the most expensive mercenary group in the city. They fetch oh. a pretty penny, but the thing is, is, well, they say they never fail their job. Is there any correlation or do you know of a place, address, popular place, once popular, 227? Mm. 227. I'll give Phoebe a uh, a recall knowledge check. Phoebe sits there, strokes her dwarven chin. I mean, nothing comes to mind. There was a, a Club 227 a few years back, but I'm pretty sure it burned down. That would have been at least six years ago. In fact, I might have had something to do with burning it down, but I don't think that has anything to do with this case at hand. Mm -hmm. What do you ask? I was just curious. He had some clocks in there since 227. Maybe they just all ran out at the same time. Well, did we find out why he was ejected from his church in the first place? He wasn't fitting the whole like narrative or something. He was, I guess, a rust in the stainless steel of the makeup yep broken gear in the car the way they there i hate the way they, you, those huh? those bryce talk always in puzzles and clues and parables so bloody annoying so no leads on where he might have gone other than this 227 no just east on the cat robot with wings thing that he flew out of but you out of the city that. yeah we lost visual as he left the city but from there, he could have gone anywhere. He could have doubled back. He could be an Ironside. He could have gone to Nex or Geb. I mean, a flying creature like that, who knows what the range even is? Not good for us. That's that's the case. If you had specifics on what he was riding, then maybe I could study it and figure out, you know, just maybe triangulate where he could be. But at the same time, we could also just ask Cog Mintakis by the whole 227. The kind of motions to the paperwork on the table. This is, you have what I have. You you know more about the situation than I do at this point. So yeah, I trust you. And I'll watch the kid. Don't worry. Speaking of, as soon as there was like, Ruffy's mansplaining this to me, I want to like, jump out, grab Josiah, and then like lead him up to my room. And then as soon as I do, shut the door. We don't necessarily because it would take. For more information on what I'm about to say, go watch this from session one. What do you mean you fucking haven't? I'm going to explain to the kid <laughs> the, the entirety, everything in 100% honesty. Oh, what we're doing and why we're here. And that conversation takes a really long time and it caps with. So Phoebe's probably better than a lot of other places in Alkenstar. I, I have a f friend is a strong word with a studio apartment, but this is probably better than the streets, but you can obviously take care of yourself. If it gets weird, if she tries to wrap you up into anything, A, come find me and I'll take care of it. B, 
You don't necessarily have to stay here. This isn't under you prison. Kidding? This is this is the coolest place I've ever been, and you just told me the coolest story I've ever heard. You're like a spy? In broad senses? Yes, I guess. You're taking this very well. You let me circle back. But Phoebe might try to to recruit me to be a spy. Yeah, that I'm all right. Fair enough. But you're saying you're saying that's bad. So you're bad. Have I asked him this out of character? How old he is? Uh, I don't think so. I'm gonna say this kid. I mean, I guess I could look. He's like 10. Okay, fair. It's more complex than that. I just don't want you to get wrapped up in a bunch of shit that you can't get out of. Or, gods forbid, hurt. Well, I don't want to get hurt, but I mean, I gotta be honest, I gotta do something with my life, right? I can't just live in people's attics and beg for food on the street. Like, I can't get a job. The robots took my job. I can't get... I can't be a spy because you say it's it's being bad. I mean, I guess I could become a dancer. I mean, that's up to you. And being a spy isn't necessarily bad. I just don't want you to get wrapped up in things that you didn't necessarily know about. But now you do. And again, you're a smart kid. The room's yours. I'll pack up all my shit and sleep somewhere. Question before you go. If you have time later, do you think you could teach me some of that cool stuff I saw you guys doing? Like the whole thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. I sort of starts looking around for my Skyrim brain is saying wooden training sword. <laughs> uh, I'll see what I can't find. We can give you some lessons out back. Sound good? That would be so cool. So I don't have a job. I just my job is to stay here and stay warm. No, I'm sure Phoebe will put you to work. Bread I smell? <laughs> There's a lot of bread. Phoebe will probably put you to work. I just wanted to bring it up in case you got wrapped up into something. Got it. Why don't you do make a request roll? This is a make a request roll for me. So this is going to be a diplomacy check against Jonaya's sort of thing. You're you're requesting for him not to get wrapped up in this this whole spy life. Requesting and, his child not be abused by a horrible person. <laughs> right. You know, you make the request. It seems from your eye that it's landed you do definitely pick up the sense that while he understands that maybe he's not ready now you get the impression that he wants to follow in your guys' footsteps he's seen you know becoming a spy becoming an, a hero becoming an adventurer is very appealing to him in a way that he maybe never thought was possible before this morning you're pretty sure he'll listen for the time being all right good talk kid I will scratch Masu and then recuse myself to the bar until the party's done advancing the plot. Um, yeah, so so back in the bar, right? You guys are finishing up the, the meeting with Phoebe. Uh, is there any other questions you have for her or anything else you guys want to do? No, I mean, the next thing to do is really to just go back to the temple and talk to the tertiary cog. Sounds like we have our plan. If I can be of any actual assistance you need my resources let me know oh how much is it to loan the uh, bag of holding from you again bag of holding let's see could we just buy it off of you i mean it, it, you could definitely buy it off me if you're interested i will sell it to you for 75 gold oh. however if you'd like to rent it uh we're a little bit you know we're kind of in between shows right now i don't have a ton of use for it although i got some some props coming in in a few days. Ah, let's just call it seven gold a day and it's yours. Could I make a deal with you? What if I create a machine that does fog for your stage and then it adds into the ambience of, you know, like, I know you're doing the whole gothy since it's, you know, like Halloween. I know you're into the scary things. So I'm thinking maybe using some nitro, some dry ice, and then putting it in a machine that actually has a fan in it. It'll be powered by, I just had this idea of using quartz and hammers right, to power it up like a battery. And then it would just be a fog machine. For you, I'll do that. 
in exchange for having the bag of holding for free on loan sure yes for like maybe a month and if it's damaged in any way then you owe me I'll make you two fog machines and even those light things that you could just point at the wall or like the curtains Make a, this is a make a request roll, so give me a diplomacy roll against Phoebe's, uh, as you're requesting Phoebe. Because the last time a lot of us almost died was because we were carrying too much. What was it? Diplomacy? Diplomacy, yeah, let's make a request. 17. I think given your friendly status with her and her sort of DC, I think... She agrees and she shakes your hand on it. But what she says is like, if I don't get this back, you owe me. I am one person you should know by now you don't want to owe, right? Of course. Yes. And I owe you literally my life right now. I may need to borrow it from time to time if I have some discreet shipments of props coming in. All right. Just let me know and that we could talk logistics about it. And yeah, and she will, uh, you successfully talked your way into having this bag of holding, but you're going to have to spend some downtime to make her the... Yeah, I'll do it tonight. <laughs> Concerning. <laughs> jam too much caffeine, jam out of brand new technology in one night. Right. We'll see if the if the, the dice favor your, uh, your, your uh, attempts at caffeine overload. However, it is 8.30, so that's going to take us to our break for the ah! night. It's when we come back, we'll be heading towards the Temple of Bry as we try to uncover more mysteries around the uh, 227. That seems to be the, the one real open investigation you guys have. Uh, while we're here at break, uh, I want you guys give us some time. Support us here at Recall Knowledge. You can head over to twitch.tv slash Recall Knowledge. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a follow or a sub. We had a sub train earlier. You guys are awesome. Thank you for that. We accept subscriptions, Amazon Prime, regular. Support the show however you can. Also, uh, if you're watching on Twitch, head over to youtube.com slash recall knowledge. It's a great place to catch up on all the past shows. Like Saruk said, go back to episode one. Go back to episode one and catch up with all, all the previous shows. As the graphic below me shows, Patreon. Head on over to patreon.com slash recall knowledge. We'll be back in 10 minutes with some more Outlaws of Alchemstar. Don't go anywhere. Wow, spoilers. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome back from the break. Um, our camera fades in from our nice commercial break, advertising all the Rollsmith dice and Molten hosting servers and Impossible Lands books, because that's the commercials that roll at our break. And when the camera fades in, we see a large temple built huge to the sky, the largest clock that you've ever really seen, mounted high on the spires, click clacking, keeping time. The sound can be heard. The time can be seen from all over the area here in the sky side, because we've crossed the bridge back to the sky side, right near Blithir, uh, back to the Temple of Bry. And as we as we sort of like the camera pans down a little bit from this establishing shot, and we see our outlaws, you know, walking up the steps as like little tiny dots into the temple. And uh, I think we hear the conversation even before the camera shows it, and it's sort of you four and uh, Mintakis and the little acolyte that is with her. She looks mildly annoyed to be back so soon. And she's like, sorry to keep you waiting. I had business to attend to. Uh, did you have any follow-up questions? Yes, a couple actually. So while we were inside uh, Koswana's workshop, we noticed that he left a lot to the clocks inside of there left at 227. Also, there seems to be a bookmark in between passages 2.2.6 and 2.2.8, but the page of 2.2.7 is missing. Would you know anything about that passage? She looks at it. Regulation 317. And the little guy is like opening up his book and like showing you guys and recites it from head. I'm gonna read it from my own book. Regulation 317. In order to truly create an original device, 
One must first create the entire cosmos. All makers build upon those who have come before. And it is the duty of every maker to leave a foundation for future makers to build upon. And Takis listens to the acolyte sort of say that. And the book, it matches your book exactly, Anita. And Mintakis nods and then can, like, kind of elaborates. Even old texts rife with error are retained by our order. But some stories from the past are simply meant as allegory or require heavy revision or annotation in light of new understandings. Olamon took a few such stories literally. It infected his work, his teaching, even his mind. You must understand every religion has those who believe they've cracked the code or uncovered truths that generations of researchers before may have missed. When presented with evidence, these people merely invent a bigger conspiracy to explain away the incongruity that allows them to maintain their beliefs. 227 is one such tale. It has been removed from our holy texts, recalled. It is no longer part of our holy teachings. Is it because the... I'm assuming based on 226 and 228 that it, 227 would be a location. Is it because of the location of 227 that you decided to take it off? the book entirely i am not personally familiar with regulation 227 so i cannot theorize as to why it was removed from our text but such things are made with careful consideration if it was removed it was for a reason that being said i also believe that oliman being that he is from this temple, left all those clues for a reason as well, which is the 227. Is there a way for us to look at maybe older versions of the book Logica Design and see what 227 is? There's like a long sort of pause as she considers your question. The acolyte that's with her kind of like sees this silence. And she's, he's like, well, there's the asynchronous archives. And then you see Mintakis sort of give him like a long sort of side eye, almost like a you, you sense a sense, a slight glare towards the young acolyte. I wink at the acolyte. Yes. The asynchronous archives. Kosawana, though a powerful primary cog, was not exempt from the many rules he broke when accessing the archives. In accordance with our Tenants, no knowledge is ever destroyed. Any information that we have deemed not worth our religious texts currently resides in the asynchronous archives. Perfect. How do we get there? You'll have to sign some forms. She nods in the acolyte who like runs off. Being outsiders to our church, it is with some sense of irony, actually easier for you to access the archives than it is for our own followers. For we consider many of the teachings stand there to be heretical in the wrong hands. While maybe true at one point or useful to the Briites of the past, if you let what you learn infect your mind, you may fall prey like Kosawana did as well. So, you are allowed access for a 24-hour time period once for every 30 days. Mm -hmm. I guess we're going to spend an entire day in the library. The uh, <laughs> the acolyte brings like the sort of like papers back, and uh, she turns it over, and it's this long handwritten legal form that essentially amounts to what she explains as an NDA. You have to sign an NDA agreeing that you will not reveal any of the information you learn within the archives to anyone else. And failure to abide by this can involve financial punishments, 
ritual spells and or banishment from the archives for life. Yeah, sir, go sign it. Yeah, we can do that. Go there first thing tomorrow. We have to put a time on this thing. Wait, 24 hours starting today or tomorrow? Tomorrow, when we get in there, right? Okay. Cog? She says, well, you signed the form now, so your time has technically already started. Ah, bloody. Well, if you had something else in mind, how um, I could just go in there myself. So, Rook, maybe you could come with me, unless you want to come nope, with that's me. not happening. All right, Ruffy. Go ride a bull. We'll figure it out. Okay. Sorry. We're not leaving you alone, Annie. She's sort of waving that paper towards you, Ruffy. Sure. I'll sign your paper. Yep, me too. There isn't anything dangerous in this library there, by chance. Well, the most dangerous thing of all. Ideas. Okay, let me rephrase that. Is there anything that's going to try to hurt us? Anything that might cause us to lose our lives? Things that might blow up in our faces? Burn us. Burn us. She shakes her head. She says, uh, the archives reside beneath the bottom floor of our lowest basements within the walls of this temple. There is nothing dangerous here in a physical sense that will hurt you while you're in our archives. You have my guarantee. See, you two are being paranoid. Honey. Does, uh, what? Does my name have an ear and eye? Both, Ruffy. It's R E F. Why? No, that looks more like an A than an E. Remember, there's a loop in there, not a tail. Raffi. Right, Ra Raffi's writing big block letters. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. There you go. Just now, and then now just a dot. Okay. Dot, right. All right. All right. All right. Good job. And on the to-do list goes, teach Raffi how to read and write. Another child I'm adopting. Leaves you with the, <laughs> leaves you with the acolyte who will escort you down to the asynchronous archives. Excellent. Uh, so he sort of leads you down. Um, yeah, why he's taking you there, you kind of hear him explaining, like, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Like, the cogs and acolytes, once you subscribe to the order, you cannot access the archives without very specific topics you are researching. And you are very carefully moderated with what you're allowed to see. You guys are in for a treat. This is... The Asynchronous Archives is one of those things that I... I really hope they let me see someday. So, do we have to let you know what we're looking for, or could we just take a gander about and pull any book that we find? Oh, no, that, that sort of former regulation is for the cogs and the, the acolytes and those of us who are in the faith. You are not required to subscribe to such That's beliefs, amazing. but you must remember you did all agree legally binding. You're not allowed to tell anyone what you research in here. You're not allowed to tell them what you find. Right, of course, and we would never, ever dream of breaking the law. Gently but firmly elbow Ruffy in the stomach. <laughs> right. Well, that being said, there are legal consequences, and, you know, the Cogmother is one of the most politically connected people in the city. I wouldn't want to get on her bad side. I think she knows the Duchess. Well, she sits on the council. That is pretty well connected. Uh, he's he's managed to take you guys down. Oh, uh, one thing. Shh. I don't think Mentakis was too thrilled with you guys. I think she was... I, I, I could read the room when I opened my mouth. I don't think she wanted you to know about the archives. The bad thing is she sort of... Well, the thing is... They're doing inventory in 16 hours from now. So even though she signed that you have 24 hours access, she sort of played you. You only really have 16 hours before they'll kick you out for inventory. So, hey, I'm not an expert on contracts or anything, but that seems like an egregious breach of a contract, no? Oh, there was a fine print that said that uh, there were that you were allowed to have access for 24 hour during the prescribed open periods. Mm. Just so happens that the open period 
16 hours. Saruk leans down so his helm covers his face so the poor little acolyte can't see how hard his eyes roll. (laughs) (laughs) Right. You know, basically, they do the, the inventory at the same time every month, and it just so happened to coincide with this trip, and so you guys actually only have 16 hours to do your investigation. He leads you to the door. Um, he's not allowed to go further. There's sort of this staircase that goes down. You're in the basement. It's already kind of dark. There's little, like, lights down here. Clockwork's everywhere, right? Like, doing all the work, cleaning, stuff like that. Takes you to the top of the stairs, says, I can go no further. But you will find all the knowledge that our faith is built upon below. Enjoy. Sort of lets you guys descend down into the asynchronous archives. All right. Is there a Dewey Decimal System or something? Like I was going to say. Don't know. I've never been I've never been allowed access. Just looking for it to do seven. We know the number. We've known the number this whole time. Uh, he unlocks the large gear-covered door to the asynchronous archives, opens the door, uh, and he's not allowed to go further, and you guys can cor- sort of descend down. And then you, he, you, you see, like, he pulls the door closed, like, sort of behind you guys. Doesn't lock it so you guys can let yourself out. But he just sort of stands there and basically tells a clockwork that's nearby to let him know when you guys are ready to leave. And the clockwork sort of takes post and just stands there right outside the door. The room opens up and you see a large library. Like, we're not just talking like a couple of bookshelves of books. It is a huge room. Bookshelves upon bookshelves stacked hundreds, if not thousands of like shelves with books just stacked to the gills. It's like a hundred years worth of knowledge that was collected, curated, and deemed not worth, you know, adding to the logic of design. So that's the first thing that you see that's down here that's interesting is all these books. That is the um, sort of history of text that you guys have access to research over the next six hours. The other thing that's kind of interesting down here is at the end of this large room, there's a giant hourglass that's probably about 15, 20 feet tall. And the sand sort of filters down through the hourglass and sparkles. Even across the room, you can see this sort of magical sparkling hourglass. On it, there's a sort of plate that is engraved, and it says the sands of time. And it looks like it's the kind of thing you can possibly gaze into instead of doing a sort of book check. You can stare into the sands, and you see visions appear in the sands as you kind of like lose yourself in the sands. And that is another way you can spend your time down here in the archive. So each round of this research is considered a four hour time block. And each of, sorry, excuse me, each of you can do like a sort of check during that four hour time to help advance the plot, learn research points in any way you see fit and or anything else you'd like to do while you're down here. And you will unlock secrets as you earn more. Let's try to see if we could find the original version of the Logica design uh, before it was revised. So where could we... Like Halbert said, is there a Dewey Decimal System in it? There doesn't appear to be at first, but maybe with some research you can attempt to understand the cataloging system and such like that. The, the, the two ways you can do are the, the research on the books, right? The This is things like academia lore, Bry lore, library lore, religion, or perception are all valid things. And like stuff like the lores are a lower DC. Religion is like a mid tier DC. And then a perception is the last ditch high DC. Oh, wow. Somebody just rolled a natural 20. Saruk with, with the Bry oh, lore. Nice. Um, and then the other thing is the, the hourglass, which can be used Bry lore, fortune telling lore, occultism, and perception. I fortune tell. I have more questions about that thing than everything else I'm doing. Yeah. So what, what were you spending? To, you're spending since you did the uh, the Bry lore. Are you doing it on the books? Yeah, I think whenever uh, whenever Hal was like, "Well, is there like a Dewey Decimal?" This isn't Hal's voice. Is there like a Dewey Decimal system? So <laughs> 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 sorry. He's just like pulling book open, looking, pulling up, like trying to find uh, the original logic design of design rather than if possible. With your critical success, you earn two research points towards your tasks, um, which hasn't unlocked like anything outright, but you guys as a group are going to kind of collectively earn research points towards milestones. 
I'm going to look for the biggest, oldest books I can. That could be Academia, Bry, Library, Religion, or Perception. I can just dump these in the chat so you guys can see them as options. Uh, Hal with a 19, a 19 Perception. So you spend basically the four hours looking for the oldest books you can. Uh, that is a failure that does not give any successes towards research. Unless you want to spend a hero point. Do critical failures hurt the points earned already? They do. Critical failures remove a point. I don't think I want to use it yet. Okay. So a failure from Hal. Um, Anita, a 14 is also a failure. I would like to use a hero point, please. Hero point. We need some research hero points in chat for our... Hero our, point. Uh, I'll go ahead Come and reveal. On! Oh no, a natural one. Anita, you find some information. You go down this rabbit hole where you're sure you're on the right track and it leads to false discoveries that actually cost you guys a point. And we're down to one point collectively so far. Oh. Rafi's looking at everyone looking at books and fuck that noise. And uh, I'm just going to stare at this little weird sand thingy. Okay. Do you have occultism, bry lore, fortune telling lore, or are we doing perception? Perception. Okay. Go ahead and make a perception check. All right. Okay. You stare at the time at the sands for a while, and it's weird, like the way that you kind of zone out, and almost like those magic eyes where you start losing yourself. You start seeing shapes and figures in the sand. But you don't see you're you're not able to focus on anything cohesive that gives you any sort of successes. A 19 on this check is not a success. But looking at this stuff, it starts opening up some worms in your brain and like uncovering things that maybe you've sealed away. Uh, I need you to make a will save. Oh, More trauma. Yeah, Welcome to Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah, that tracks because Rafi probably wasn't looking at it with the research in mind, just looking at it because it was interesting. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buddy. All right, we'll save. We'll save. Let's go. That's, That's a 28. A yeah, so it tries to affect your mind, but you're stoic enough to like not let it actually put any long-term effects on your brain, and you're fine. Trauma says what? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so four hours go by. You've made a little bit of progress. You've earned one research point in total. Uh, Anita's gone down a conspiracy theory rabbit hole where she was convinced that it had something to do with the Duchess and her uh, being a snake person. You would not believe what I just saw. I'm sure I wouldn't. What Saruk has found so far is that they do have like sort of a historical, like basically every time there's like a new revision in the, the sort of holy text, they take out some of the old passages that no longer fit, add new ones in, recall every logic of design that they've issued to everyone and give them a new updated copy. So here, over the hundreds of years that this church has been active, there are a lot of revisions and it's taken some time to find the correct one that has this regulation that you know of. So let's do the second round of the next four hours. What would you guys like to do on this round? Second verse, same as the first, probably with a natural 20 again. Mm. Okay, it's not a natural 20, but it is a success. So it does add one more research point. We're back up to a total of two. Not bad. I should have thought about this, but I didn't think about it. My bad, everyone. Uh, since this is taking a very long, tiny, whiny, wibbly, greater than 10 minute error, I feel like I can reasonably clue in everybody on the team. I think that's reasonable. So everyone take the clue in effect for like pretty much these researches. Okay. I would like to use Academia Lori once again for my research. Plus one. Maybe Saruk is able to redirect you towards something more, less conspiracy minded. Come on, focus. Stop being such a conspiracy theorist. Please. Hey, look at that. Natural That's 20. a natural 20. <laughs> You're just reading that, about the Vishkanya, which are coming out in Lost <laughs> Omens Impossible Lands, which is printed in like two weeks. And I'm very excited. I for know, it. I know, I know. So that is a critical focus. success, which gives us two more research points, bringing us up to a total of four. We still haven't hit a milestone. We're, we're getting some points going. Um, Hal and Ruffy? I want to look uh, and see if there are any other like uh, more fancy books this time in certain area. Like our one shit is one shelf. Like like hold books that are locked with like, you know, mm. bookends that have 
keys and shit like that. Okay, we're looking for the fancy books. Another perception check. I'm going to use a hero point. Yes, that will be a critical failure, so you should definitely use a hero point. Hey, there we go. Let's turn a critical failure into a success. That hits our fifth uh, our fifth research point as from the group. Not bad, not bad. And Ruffy. Ruffy's in front of this glass thing again. Like, turning its back on it, and then turning and drawing his gun. Then turning back. Looking at his hair. Checking his teeth. Are we done here yet? Oh. Did no you response. find the books? Yes, they're quite interesting. Look at this, Adita. Oh, fine. I stare at this thing again. Sure. Give me another perception check. Four hours. You are super yeah. 17. <laughs> it's interesting and it's like addictive, it's like staring at it. Like, are you going to see this time? That's 23. Okay. You stare in looking for any meaning in the flashing sands. Um, again, well, this 23 is actually not a success it's a failure on this oh. this thing again Ruffy I need you to make a will saving throw staring into the sands come on blue steel trauma says what yeah trauma says what you're stoic enough okay so at the end of the eight this is the eight hours you're halfway through your research time you've hit a milestone at this point nice I think between um, Anita and how looking for the fancy books and everyone's you find the section where they kind of have in some semblance of order logic of designs uh and you realize now that you've had to go back approximately 40 some odd years to find a book that actually has passage 227 in it and so you you finally after like hours of checking the books you find flip the page 226 is on the left boom right on the right 227 and you guys are like kind of like you, you found it right you call everyone over everyone can kind of gather around and look and you guys find I have a handout for this. Can... Two two seven, is it you? Don't forget to hydrate from Sprigonario. Hydrate. All I've got is this tight heat. All right, we'll do. Regulation two two seven. So we have under two two seven, section two, the apprenticeship of bronze. Section two dot two, holy places. Section two dot two dot seven. At the eastern end of Tentacle Canyon in the Spellscar Desert, 180 miles from Cloud Reaver Keep, on bearing north 95 degrees east, is a spherical geode of amethyst exactly 40 feet in diameter. Its shape is so perfect that it is doubtless deific in nature. Even time itself seems to bend around this flawless gem, this cradle of quartz. That's the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, title drop. <laughs> like light reflecting off just a single facet of a cut gem on a box of blackest silk, Bri reveals an aspect of her perfect design in the depths of even the most torturous wastelands. So when we find um, that, I'm going to glance over to Hal. So I feel like we've talked about this at some point, but what do you know about the Spellscar Desert? Do you have any specific? I can tell you like a very little bit, like on the surface level, but do you have any lores that could apply to this? If the Mana Waste lore applies to the Spellscar Desert, I do. Or if it's on the other side, I don't know. The Spellscar Desert is definitely part of the Mana Waste, so that would definitely apply. So why don't you give me a recall knowledge check? Hey, that's the name of the channel. Oh. What does that mean? One word, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got any hero points for me? Hang on, no, I gave mine to your GM so he can beat you up with a desk trap. Damn it. <laughs> oh, look at that, the GM's paying it back. Balance. I'll bring it's a hero point from chat. Like clue you roll. In also. Plus one. Oh, my God. Plus one. Twenty-three. Nice. The mana wastes are so so the mana waste is the whole general. Sparrow Scar Desert is a very specific place within the mana waste. So Alkenstar kind of sits. If you look at a map, Alkenstar, the, the mana waste is like this thin strip that 
exists between Nex to the north and Geb to the south. And it's this entire uninhabitable space where magic doesn't work. But there's a particular, particularly scarred place where magic not only doesn't work, its effects sort of are still visible and still felt by the land. And that's called the Spell Scarred Desert. And it's sort of this no man's land to the east of Alkenstar. So you leave Alkenstar, you go directly east. There's still a few miles. Like there's a there's an easternmost outpost of Alkenstar. It's called Cloud Reaver Keep, which is mentioned here in this place. You you've probably been to Cloud Reaver Keep, but that's basically the furthest east most sane people will ever go, because anything beyond that is kind of considered unhospitable, uninhabitable, and just sort of you don't go there unless you have a death wish. This text talks about this place being not just in the Spellscar Desert but 180 miles into the Spellscar Desert, which takes you almost all the way approximately to the coastline itself. It is about as deep as you can get in the Spellscar Desert itself. You've definitely never been there. It's a place where no sane person would go, but you know generally that much about Spellscar Desert. And given the directions you're seeing here, you know, if you had a map, and you had spell keeper or cloud reaver keep you could at least plot you think in a decent amount of area where this place actually is like the mana storms here happen in alkenstar and they roll in sometimes and they can do crazy things you just dealt with one a few days ago where it like rained lizards mm -hmm. on you right out in the spell scar desert the storms can be bigger more unpredictable and definitely more dangerous Basically, the storms roll in from the Spellstar Desert towards Alkenstar. But that's what you've learned so far with this level of research. All right. We're going to keep going. we got eight more hours. I'm just I'm still here reading books, flipping through books. I'm like, all right, so what else could be... What else could we look for? 227 wasn't... Could I just research more? Try to figure out what would have gave him the conspiracy. I think what Saruk is shooting for is why this was removed from the holy text. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing that you could possibly learn with more research, right? Or like, what else could be found in the Cradle of Quartz? Yeah. So let's do another round of research and we'll see what else we can uncover. Always and forever. Take your plus one. Thank you, sir. Plus one. Uh, 30 for Anita. Nice. Nerd power activate. Nerd power. A 30, even without being a natural 20, is a critical success and earns you two research points. Oh, nice. So Rook using that hero point to go from a 15 to a 28, turning that roll into a success, earning one more research point, giving you guys oh, a nice. total of eight. Nice, nice. nice. Maybe there's more info on this Cloud Reaver Keep. Maybe there's a map here nearby and one of the... I'm going to look for the Thomas Guide section. <laughs> for sure. Out of character, I have no context for that. And then my ears perk up. The me guide. <laughs> it's analog uh, map quest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 20, unfortunately. Still not high enough for a success in this research thing, hell. I think you find a map easy enough of the desert, and I don't know if I have a... Do I have one I can actually share? I'll look and see if I, there's a map I can share of the desert, and if not, I'll make you guys one. Scrolls frantically through his copy of Lost Omens, Impossible Lands, for a map screenshot. Yeah, I can do, do that. Meanwhile, Rafi contemplates the orb. Oh, I'm going to die of boredom in here. You could help us look through the done. books, you know. Why would I want to do that? Because we get out of here faster. Come on, I'll help you learn how they're organized. Did you look through this section already? No. I, section. I have sections that I've seen them around. Why would you? You know you've seen me there. I'm, I'm just going to check this one and I'm just start rearranging the books. <laughs> okay. And then I stare at the sand again. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. The sand is like TikTok for Reffy. <laughs> He's just doom scrolling for 12 hours. Books are just boring. Screaming. Who needs words? I got this sand. Picture sand. And the time. All right, picture sand. Show me what you got. That's unsafe. <laughs> Not high enough for a success, unfortunately. And again, Refi, I need a will save. <laughs> I kind of just want to see what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. All right. I'm going to use. Uh, I did say I want to see what happens. I do have a hero point left. I'll use it just to see. Maybe I'll get a critical failure. Okay. That, that is the spirit. Oh. Uh uh, not a critical failure, still a failure. As you like are looking through like the sands of time, suddenly like the the sands start to take shape in a way that like you can't look away from, and you see a very young you, and you see Ambrose Muglin. Oh. You see him standing over you, teaching you the finer arts of hand to hand combat, and every time you make a mistake, you catch the butt of the gun right to your face and fall to your knee. And you feel, you realize you're no longer watching this happen. You're in the moment, you're feeling it. You're small and you're looking up at Ambrose Muglin as he taunts you, tells you to do it right or find a new place to live. And you snap out of that back into this thing. Uh, these images sort of haunt you. You're gonna be stupefied one for the next round of the investigations but that brings us to uh just one one sort of um round left you there's a little notice this little voice box like attention four hours until monthly inventory mm -hmm. once more with feeling mm -hmm. nice. i'm just gonna make this inventory as hard as possible for them <laughs> 25 that is a success that will earn you another point nice. which um is the ninth one for you guys come on anita's starting to speed read but in a genius type of way <laughs> if that is it's even a thing oh yeah you're gonna prove it with Ooh, those 26 26 that takes thing. to 10 research points not bad not bad nice Uh, Ruffy and Hal. Hal's going to continue to look around, find any important scrolls or documents in the scroll and document section. Like maybe there's like a, a desk that has scrolls piled up. He's going to go start unwrapping them and looking. Learn, want to learn more about like maybe her, uh, what did she say? Her perfect design. Mm. Like, is that a, is that a thing in one of these books? Uh, you, get, you gotta continue the map on page H27. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see what you come up with. I feel like we're in uh, that scene in Avatar where in there, inside that library. Fuck off, Wan Chi Tong. I need to figure out where this keep is. <laughs> so, unfortunately, it's not a success. So you don't earn any help towards completing your task, but it's also not a critical failure, so we're not hurting the investigation either. Since, uh, that vision, Refi's been unable to uh, pull himself away from the sands, pull himself away from the vision, pull himself away from the pain. He's going to keep looking. He's stuck on the TikTok again. Can someone pull him out? <laughs> 16 hours of TikTok. We had to invoke the trauma, next, didn't we? Next, next. It does stupefy you. Emotional damage. <laughs> emotional damage. Going on TikTok now. It's meta. Yeah, unfortunately, 16 hours of staring at thing, you're not trained enough to make sense of what you're seeing. This one doesn't well no, yeah, you still have to make the uh the will save. Oh no. I don't think I'm even trying to focus on the research anymore. I'm actually trying to see more of the, my past. Yeah, nothing comes, unfortunately. So that is a failure and you you will stay stupefied for like the next few hours after you leave here, like at least the next four hours, the next round of research. 
But overall, that takes us to 10 research points in total. Here's what you guys have learned in this. Like now that you've learned about the credit course, you're pushing the research just a little bit. You sort of researched and learned a lot more about sort of the myths, the legends, the conspiracy theories. A lot of the, the stuff and a lot of this text is really concerned with Bry's origins or deific origins. Like, is she, is she human part clockwork or is she clockwork that somehow gained sentience? There's a lot of conspiracy theories around where she came from. Some of the wildest conspiracy theories that you find is that Bry has an interest in and possibly even has dominion over time. It's a really heretical thing because normally the Bry aspect of time is all focused on measuring time, clockworks, clocks, the measurement of time, but not the manipulation and the mastery over time. A lot of these texts you come across seem to inform that there are people that believe that Bry has the ability to, to control time and manipulate the flow of time. And a lot of them seem to point back at the Cradle of Quartz and the original researcher that went there then discovered the place. He essentially made accusations that he went there and spent basically days wandering the archives, the, the Cradle of Quartz and the sort of geodes and stuff. But when he returned, only mere hours had passed which sort of fueled this expectation that maybe maybe the Cradle of Quartz is the apex to some sort of time travel mechanism. But this was deemed highly heretical and against the clock, you know, the church's beliefs and what their beliefs are, the measurement of time, not the, and the measure, master of clockworks, but not the flow of time. That's considered taboo and not part of their teachings. And so it was excised from the books. Um, there is another thing you guys unlocked, which is a series of articles penned by a researcher under the pseudonym The 13th Ordinal. Many times abbreviated as just 13. The article suggests that the goddess Bri, as understood by her followers, is no more than a regular clockwork disguising her true divinity, something which mortals will never, ever be able to understand. But the 13th Ordinal had a specific interest in the Cradle of Quartz, this holy site in the Spellscar Desert, which the 13th Ordinal believed was the key to uncovering the truth of Bri and uh, the full understanding of time. This 13th Ordinal is definitely interested in the time aspect of Bri and it looks like these articles were penned about 40 years ago. And he is leading. He was basically trying to take a group of acolytes to the Cradle of Quartz to research more of their meanings. Shortly after that, there's an article from the Bryite clergy denouncing the 13th Ordinal, labeling their beliefs as the concurrent heresy, and subsequently removing any mention of the Cradle of Quartz from the holy text. The timeline matches up and you have all these like sort of pieces lined up. And it seems like no one in the last 40 years has heard or mentioned the Cradle of Court since. Hey, so I, I vaguely remember a clock set on 13 at mm -hmm. Kosalana's lab, I think. And look at the person who's been writing notes so well this week. <laughs> the one that's been, uh, the one that has the Aeon quartz in it with the hammers yeah that's the one that had the 13th um hour i had the third and the hours like generally you see like they refer to the the hours on the clock as ordinal so like there's 12 ordinals on the clock that clock had a 13th ordinal on it mm -hmm. i mean maybe that 13th is olaman that's a logical conclusion it sounds like we're going very deep into the desert to find out though oh thank goodness Oh, Rafi, are you all right? And it becomes obvious Rafi is not okay. I was going to like walk up next to him. Hey. What? What? Where are you at? I'm here. Where are we again? We're headed out. We got everything we needed. 
Right, how much how much gold do you need? None? Are you Anita, would you come here please? What's going on? Is there a doctor in the house? I say quietly, like lean over to Anita. Are you alright? Hmm? Do you want some air? Right. It's it's really stuffy in here. Hmm. Be in the basement and all. Hmm. Basement, yeah. I grab I wrap an, an arm around Ruffy's arm. Come on, Ruffy. Maybe we should go up. Before the 16th hour comes and tertiary Mintaka scares us away from the library. Also, we've been down here for a full fucking day. Let's go get coffee. You do hear heavy footsteps descending down the stairs and you're, you know your time is up, basically. Yeah. It's like inventory time, right? Oh, you gotta smoke. Yeah. There you go. You're not supposed to take anything with you, but you could attempt to try if you'd like. We'll take only the memories. Across this like pretty quiet sort of library, you hear a voice call out like, "Oi!" And there's like a pause, and you guys sort of glance across this large library, and you see, standing there in front of you, a trio of dwarves, each carrying a long golden rifle dressed in all black with a golden bullet strap across <gasps> their chest. The bumblebees! <laughs> <laughs> the yellow jackets! The yellow jackets! <laughs> I see a bumblebees! <laughs> I told you they're real! I told you they're real! <laughs> Quit snooping into the priest's affairs if you know what's good for you. And then all of them pull up their rifles and aim them at you guys. And we're going to roll um, inside initiative. the temple. You remember that part where the boys were going to go ride bulls for 16 hours and I said they were paranoid? They weren't fucking paranoid. I'm glad Mentalism. you two were here. How are you letting this? Uh, how are this you is a violation. Someone it's tell the Borg. <laughs> <laughs> I will be making a report. So first of all, this is an awesome map of the asynchronous archives that was created once again by Ricardo here on the Ooh, show. He made this map. Yeah. You ought to give this man's hero points for all the work he does for this and for making yeah, all really the outlines should. and stuff. Take us to the map. That's all I want. Oh yeah, I'm about to. I, the stream can see it. I'll take you guys. <laughs> Uh, I will say for the repeated staring into the glass and making like a nice show, uh, why don't you take an, a hero point on Ruffy just for the, uh, the sort trauma. of like thing? Like someone's got to get a hero point for this for this trauma. Yeah, so, yeah. This map is uh, is created by Ricardo for the show, and it will be available starting tomorrow. We'll have a, we'll have a free version released on our Patreon, as well as more advanced versions for those of you who uh, subscribe on our Patreon. The gear tables are a nice touch. And if you look on the very front where you guys are, there is a actual copy of the Logica design right there. I don't see it. Yeah, it's, it's right behind us. It bothers me how everything is very lined up, though. None of this archive is asynchronous. Oh, I didn't update the... There's a newer version of the map. Did not update it. That's what I was... I was like, I'm forgetting something. That's what I was forgetting. So if you guys can go ahead and roll initiative for me in the last few minutes of tonight's show... We got the gilded gunners have shown up. We're all wielding. The art shows them with rifles on their. Uh... Wait, would we have healed up in the night? Because this is the next day, right? This is the same day. It's not even the next day, right? Oh shit! You guys went to Phoebe and then you went right out. Okay. Same day. It was a library. The library is safe, right? Nope. It's fucking not. It's not at all. This uh, twenty-one for Anita. Twenty-six for Hal. Where are they? Oh. It's a 22 for Rafi. Uh, 22 for me as well. I always forget that sweet scouting bonus. Hey. Which we might not have in this moment, question mark. Hard to say, but yeah, you guys don't you guys don't have enough to get ahead of the uh mm. of the gunners at least. Okay, so off the top, there's you can, a firefight's about to ring out here in this very large library, as a matter of fact, you guys are like 90 plus feet away. Uh how you the first to react? They're up on a little balcony overlooking the library, right? There is a staircase up, and there's like a sort of balcony. They're kind of behind. They 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 haven't taken any action in the combat yet, so they're standing there. They're not. They haven't taken cover or anything. There is sort of cover, like partial cover, just from the balcony, but they haven't like hid behind it or anything. Gotcha. Um, I think uh, Hal's gonna move, move, move. Thirty, thirty, thirty. And also, this is a case where you guys definitely did not have your weapons at the ready. Yeah. 
one of the rare times that you guys have, um, have an ambush. Let me see where I go. I will go. We need a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> that has the same energy as I Three. need. Thirty. <laughs> <laughs> And I think 30. Go, okay. go, go. Pretty fast, nimble. Make it across the ground. Uh, they get to take their turns next. So this one lines up a shot at Anita 95 feet away. This is the second range increment on their dueling pistol. Okay. But they make a shot against her. 11 makes a 24 with a range penalty. That hits. Gonna hit. You take 10 points of concussive damage as the okay. bullet like shoots you. Oh, not Wyvern. Oh, yeah, this is Anita. Um, Good Wyvern, blocking the bullet. <laughs> and then second action is to reload. And third action is to take cover behind that, behind the like barrier right there. Um, this one is going to do much of the same, only it actually can't get to anyone except for the giant robot blocking. So it targets Wybert and makes a dueling pistol strike against Wybert. Ooh, that's a miss. It just glances off of Wybert's like, thick armor. And same thing, reloads and takes cover. And last one, same thing, it's going to strike Wybert because Wybert's the big one. Yes. Oh, it's almost a natural 20, but it is another miss. And then uh, take cover. Okay. Um, yeah, that's actually all of their turns. Okay, so first action, I'm going to try and go into overdrive. Here's my crafting. That's uh, 31. Oh, 30, 30 without the crafter's eyepiece. Sorry. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's still a critical success, so you can take the critical success effect. Kill. Anyway, while I work on that. I'm going to use my second action to move and take cover. Uh, second and third to move and take cover. Would you mind moving this big fuck off robot so I can shoot them? Yeah, he will. Can I hide in these chairs? Will that be enough cover? I mean, you can like hide behind the tables and chairs. It's, it's your cover, yeah. 20, 25, okay. And then because of advanced construct, I, uh, Wybert just has an extra action to move or stride, so he nice. shall move. He's 25 feet right here. Ooh. That's it for my turn. Ooh, I took cover. That should be fine. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Saruk. All righty. You know what it is, kids. Untap, upkeep, devise, a uh, strat. You know, fun thing. They're, uh, they're really far away. They're in the first range increment of a backpack ballista. So we're going to start <laughs> with the one in the middle. Uh, I'm going to definitely have made sure I bought ammunition for this thing and put it on yeah. the sheet. Don't worry about it. Watch out. Okay, so I don't have them targeted. I'm just looking at the dice. You know what? Yeah, I'll take a 28. Would a 28 hit the one in the middle? Even with cover, absolutely, yeah. Nice. Okay, so then that should be the right amount of damage. So second action, reach back, the big fuck off like rail gun comes over like Saruk is a Gundam. In the second arc forward comes the big cannon and then boom, and it flies, knocks a bunch of shit out of the way and lands somewhere center of mass. And that is three. All right. Looking good. Uh, Ruffy. Bumblebees or not, who the fuck do you think you're shooting at? And uh, first free action, draw my dueling pistol. Second free action. Stride. Yeah, just just for the record, these clocks in the middle, like these six clocks, there are clocks that have like four faces on them. Uh, they are pretty tall. They're like grandfather clocks. They tower the room. So they're definitely like you could also like kind of hide behind it and take cover. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, first action. I'm going to use cover fire on the one who shot Annie. OK, the option is he can take an extra. What is the option? Uh, they can choose to... Here, let me put it in chat. Choose either to get a bonus to AC or plus four if they have cover. It'll take the plus four against... It'll take the plus four. It also takes a minus two circumstance penalty to range attacks until the end of its next turn. Yes, so it'll have penalty on the attack next turn. Perfect. Yeah. 
That's fine. Which one are you targeting? So, uh, the one with the die? I targeted it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you did. I, I put on the right one. I just want to make sure. All right. Strike. 26. Even with the plus four Ooh. AC bonus they got, that's still a hit. That's a pretty good shot. Eight points of damage. Nice. Perfect. Marsh. Second action, running, reload. Second action, I will then. Uh, third, sorry, third action, I'll target. It said range penalty minus two. So yeah, it was calculated. I'll say the middle one now. I will take cover here then. Yep. So you you take cover behind that thing and give yourself the. Uh... You had plus two just from standing behind it, so you have plus four now from the cover. That's my turn. Until you move or take an action. Okay, perfect. Uh, Hal? Hal will pull his sword. Okay. And he will move. Going up the stairs is difficult terrain, just yeah. FYI. Yep. What do you know? Didn't Why did the cler uh, cleric Sabrai put all that dynamite underneath the balcony here? <laughs> huh. How convenient! It'd be a shame if somebody shot it. Wouldn't that be outright heresy? Five, ten. You gotta get 15, them to turn such that they fucking look into yeah, the hourglass. 20, you can basically 30. get to the first step. Yeah. I really like this map. It's so interesting. This is really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah as you come cool. running, right? Yeah. So yeah, you're running up the stairs. He, you can see they've all like taken cover behind the thing. You come running at them. That was one action. I mean, the second could... action, right? Because you drew your weapon, then you ran. Yeah. Um. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see what I can do. Like actually, as you as you move from here across this gap, the one closest to you sees an opening, and is actually going to use a reaction here, which is called shot of opportunity, which is whenever what? anyone uses a move action within thirty feet, triggers an opportunity attack, and they'll take that opportunity attack against you. I hate that. It's a ranged opportunity attack. What? I want but that. The, the, the shot These misses. These are good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told you. Well, Bruce is gay and uh, And then I think I'm going to do a dueling parry. I mean, there's definitely dynamite there. We could ask the person who made the map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, you can. It does says against all. It doesn't say against melee attacks melee. only, so you can yeah. do that. All right, this one here on the first side, this is the one that has the cover fire penalty. Take cover at Refi, who's hiding and has a plus four AC bonus. Targets Refi and shoots the dueling pistol. Ooh. Critical hit, 32, but it's not a critical hit because you took cover. Nice. It is. But it's still going to be a uh, strike. Or 12 points of damage. Second action, reload. Third action, take cover again. The one in the middle, as Hal kind of comes around, you actually watch as this one kind of comes out of cover and then, like, aims a shot at you and, like, acts like he's going to pull the trigger, which causes you to sort of try to dueling parry it. But what they are actually doing is they're trying to do a feint against you. This is a deception check against your perception DC. A 15, you don't take the bait. So not a critical failure. So it doesn't work. You don't become flat footed against the attack. Second action is going to be to uh, strike, although you're not flat footed to the strike. Uh, 27 Don't to you cover, me. right? Uh, no. Oh, you're doing parried. That's right. Yeah. Uh, not quite enough. Or sorry, just enough to hit. So. Um, just regular damage. Seven points of damage. This last one that has no... Um, I think this last one, first action has to be to reload because they don't have their weapon loaded. Second action is going to be to fire at you. Uh, 24... M it does hit. Yeah, you already got the bonus on there. Uh, for... 12 points of damage. Damn. Third action, reload. All right, Anita. Uh, using two actions to give Wybert three, he will just come bounding down. 
They're up on a balcony. They are, but he's tall, right? He's oh, large. Right. How far does that movement that you just did? 65. 60. So all oh, yeah. three so actions. You, you can't get up to the top half. You'd have to be down here because okay. you can't go up over the balcony without spending like a climb action or a, a thing like that. But you can get to there. But as you kind of come, this one with the weapon reloaded will. Yeah, they'll take the shot of opportunity against Wybert. A critical uh, that's hit. 30, which is a critical hit against Wybert. Okay. That's going to be 28 points of damage to Wybert. Oh, dare you. But Wybert gets right up on him. Okay, and then for my action, what am I going to do? I'm going to. Oh, I don't want to give them reason to shoot. None of them are in cover now because the other two didn't take their cover action, and this last one had to pop out of cover to take the shot. They're all just sort of not in cover. Okay, I just want to get closer to Rafi and everyone that I need to heal, so I'm gonna stay here. There you go. All right, Saruk. Hockey dokey. Uh, we're gonna target the middle one again, untap, upkeep, press a button, have a struggle. I'm going to cheese in action to draw my Giselle real quick once. Just so I have a thing to roll. Hasha! All right. It's going to be a 23. I think I'm satisfied with a 23. Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? So first action is devise a stratagem. There are a lot of bullets flying. It's a, a very not so great that this archive is becoming quite asynchronous. So that's just barely in a Giselle's second range increment. Would a 21 hit? Are you, you're going to take the shot from there? Yeah, got to 21 the just misses. Heck. With the rank, with the penalty. Alrighty, that is my turn. I like to imagine there's some metal piece somewhere that the bullet hits instead of them, and there's that very loud 1950s western wing that Ricardo will play on his on the sound. Like, a little spring shoots out of the clock behind him. Uh, Ruffy. Let's see. I will probably do cover fire again on the one that shot Annie again. It will take the cover from it, the plus two AC bonus. All right. I'm going to use a hero point. Natural one. Yeah, let's use that hero point, yes. that roleplay hero point you got from staring into the sands of time. It's good sands of time. Nice. That is a hit. 28. To the cover. That's weird, why didn't it have the damage? All right. Bad damage. Second action, running reload. And third action, I'll take cover. Okay. And that's it. All right. I'm going to move up 10, 15. Yep, that triggers 20. the attack. One. Wouldn't, they, wouldn't they have already used it? That was the last or turn. Oh, this one over here got a shot on Wyvern? But the one closest mm. to Hal hasn't taken a reaction yet. Because he used it and then Hal during Hal's turn last time, and then he got his turn and got it back. Correct. Ah, that's right. Alright, so reaction shot. Nice. That's a two on the dice. That goes wide. Misses. Almost a natural twenty. Yeah, uh, get, keep getting close, but not quite getting it. So you can move up closer. I think the one in the middle has a reaction still. So as you move closer, it will take its strike as well. Oh, a 23. Well, you get one AC bonus because it's shooting through his ally, but I think that still hits. Yeah. For nine points. Um, but you've closed the distance on your your targets. That's one action. I have my, hand, I have my item out. I'm going to use Scout's Charge. Okay. New features. Let's see. Scout's Charge. That lets me do a stride, a feint, and then a strike for two actions. Whoa. And I can use stealth instead of deception. So I'll move up on them. So what does this look like? Shadowy? Is it like a shadowy thing running through? What is what does Hal's like scout strike look like in this guy? I think he's like hunkered down underneath the, the stairs as the guy's firing over and he hits his shoulder and he ducks and he kind of swings from one banister up to the other banister as he comes into range. And he will make a strike. Uh, faint first with using stealth. Faint first with stealth. That is a 20. Uh, 
20 is unfortunately not a success. Okay. And then I will strike with my Kopesh. Go ahead. Ooh, a three on the dice. Total of 16 is going to miss. All right. My turn. This one here kind of like brings the gun towards you. Like they're about to like fire at point blank. And but it, it's doing this as a feint, not loaded too. So, but that's okay. It's it's attempting to feint against you with a deception check. I appreciate the beauty and the irony if this passes. <laughs> not even close. I don't think. Oh, 19. Is that success? That is your that is your DC. So the target is flat footed against the next melee attack. Is feint against will? Faint is against perception. Then it misses. Uh, uh, yep, that's correct. It hits. Yeah. So it brings up the weapon. You kind of react to it and you kind of open yourself up for a melee strike. It has this other hand. It like it closes its fist and it does a strike against you. You are flat footed for this strike. Um, and it does a knuckle duster punch. Uh, that is a 26. Which will hit. You take from the knuckle duster. And it gets sneak attack on you because you're flat footed. There's a punch as the, the, the sort of knuckles hit you. And then there's a, an explosion that's loud enough. You all hear like gunpowder explode as this thing hits Hal. Uh, and you take 16 points of damage. And then for the third action attempts to like back away from you, which would trigger an opportunity attack if you'd like to take it. Yep. That will hit. Nice. Nice. 12. Perfect. 12 points of damage takes the full 12. Um, but it kind of backs away, but that's as far as it can get. This one here has to spend the first action reloading. The second action targeting Hal with a gunshot. Dueling pistol strike. Five on the dice. Oh, you're not flat-footed to that strike, so five on the dice misses. And then the third action kind of step behind this uh, clock and stand there. This one here, um, seeing Wyber sort of like lumber up. Wyber's tall, right? <laughs> Wyber can like reach uh -huh. up. So I think what they do is they knuckle dust or punch Wyber. Uh, 23 will hit. Yes. Wyber takes eight points of bludgeoning damage with a little bit of like explosion from this knuckle duster. Okay. And then... Um, I think uh, basically uh, starts moving up towards the staircase, retreating towards the staircase. That's their turn. Anita. Okay, how high is this balcony? It's probably like 10 feet down. So it's like 10 feet up. So Wybert is kind of just like tall enough that he's just like basically eye level with their shins. Okay. I have a question. If I move here to where Halbrin is, and then use Searing Restoration, would that still reach him? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, I'll do Yeah, because Wyber's big enough. We've already said he's taught to be in melee with the people on the balcony. You can be adjacent to Hal from there. Okay, so Wyber is going to bound through these tables. <laughs> I spent two actions to give three to Al. Uh, to, yeah. And then uh, one action to do Searing Restoration. Here's my d20. That's two d10 for Hal. Let me roll that for you. Is there, what does that look like? There's almost like a like like something kind of chemicals come out and then it burns and gives how like healing. What is what happens from Wybert? Uh, so Wybert. So how I flavored this was that Anita was reverse engineering a healing potion, but she couldn't find you know like the magical properties of healing potions. So it's spicy when it hits how's wounds because it actually contains just ginger, turmeric. Uh, some black powder so that if in the event that he's bleeding, he could have a recovery check to try and see if he could close them up right away. Oh, oh no. I'm unstable. Wybert's unstable now. But, oh wait, 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 no. That's 15 points of healing. 15 healing for Halbrand. For Halbrand, yeah. Um, and then here's my d20. Nope, unstable. Okay, so that's three actions. Uh, and then I'm going to use one action to grab a healing, uh, an elixir of life just to have it in my hand. Yeah. 
if I have it. Yeah, I have one. Okay. Alrighty. I don't know why the thing kicked me out of Vod Ninja. I hope you guys can hear me. Oh, uh, I can. Okay, excellent. So things are going to each and every one of the hells in a handbasket very quickly. Does it look like they're trying to run off or? It does look like they've kind of started to fall back up the staircase as they're still firing at you. I feel like I should probably ask, given how shitty things are going, is that the only escape route? It is. It's the one way down, at least that you guys have know about. They let you into that door down into the hair. Um, it's the only way you guys have know of if there is a secret way in or out. You're not aware of it. Lovely. Well, you know what that means. Untap, upkeep, devise a stratagem. I'm going to shoot the one closest to the one that like the front of the three of them. And I will not take that. Instead, I'm going to just stride twice. And that's my turn. Perfect. Ruffy. They would have kind of cover from where I am, wouldn't they? Just uh, like a plus one cover, not anything too major. Okay, yeah. I'll shoot one then. Perfect. I'll do cover fire again. Okay. It will take the AC bonus. All right, so that's a plus two. And I have the one targeted, so... Nice. Uh, that is a, it's it's um a hit just barely even with the cover bonus. It's a hit. Damn. Nice. That's a little better. Twelve points of damage. Nice shot. And, uh, like a big uh, chunk of blood flies out. This damn assassin. <laughs> I will do running reload. Third action. Can't even see him, so I'm not going to take cover. Yeah, stride to there. That's fine. That brings us to the top of the round. Hal Brent. And Hal, scurry down side of Wyber. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's basically will be like a climb action to climb down Wyber, but you totally could. Okay. Yeehaw! Uh, make, a, make an athletics check for that climb. Athletics check. Climb in Pathfinder is... Um, yeah, this is only a DC 10 to go down. Yeah, no problem. You make it down Wyber. That's a success. You can move five feet per 20 feet of your land speed i think going down yeah you can spend an action and use all your movement in one action to climb down wyber and get to the ground safely um this is a movement action and it does trigger opportunity attacks from people within 30 feet of you unfortunately for them neither one of these two within 30 feet of you actually have a bullet chamber because they did not reload last turn and the only one that could yeah is is yeah you're good it, they don't have like they kind of like damn it Right, they don't have a bullet in the chamber. Uh, then he will reach around in his backpack and pull out a health potion. Okay. That's all my actions. This one here. Can you put the cover fire in chat for me, Ruffy, so I can put the effect on him? Sure. This one will uh, target you. They're going to start with a, um, with a feint, a deception against your perception. 1830 that's a critical success i believe okay critical success which means you are flat-footed against oh it's only melee attacks that you're that you can do with that that's interesting better go run up and punch him then it makes you flat-footed <laughs> though it, it makes you flat-footed against melee attacks yeah that's true huh well it doesn't really help them does it come down here you powers <laughs> i thought they had a feature where I was thinking of a different character where they have uh, they can make you flat footed at range attacks. In this case, you, you want are flat footing <laughs> melee attacks. It doesn't affect this. You're not flat footed, so I will uh, just dueling pistol strike for the second action. 15 on the dice for 30 <laughs> regular damage uh, for seven points of damage. And uh, as I get shot and I'm running up, I'm yelling out, You think you can replace me? Huh? Uh, I'm trying to move this thing. So anyways, oh, what? okay, I see. Um, just kind of mo starts moving up the staircase with this last action. Can only get partway up the stairs. First action. I think they just reiterate, right? Like, stay away from the priest if you know what's good for you. With all three actions, this one kind of runs up and out of the archives. Um, this one who doesn't have a bullet chamber does much of the same. Uh, three, All three actions run up and out of the archives. Um... 
that's basically there's just one that's left uh anita they all left already two of them have left one of them is still running up the staircase but they it was the one that shot ruffy so they didn't have enough action to get all the way out okay i'm gonna spend two actions three actions 25 75 to get here Whee! Okay. and then wybert is just gonna stay there <laughs> can he like can he like cover hal like stand in front of hal or something Hal would have to be the one to spend the action to give cover. I don't think Wybert has something that lets him give cover to someone else. But you can like stand on the same like space right as Hal. You can stand on the same space as Hal is providing cover to Hal, right? So you can stand on Hal. You can share the same square. Okay. There you okay. go. Rook. Okay, so I don't have line of sight to the two people who are running up the stairs right now. Uh, they've they are they have gone up and like broken line of sight. They're at the top of the staircase, kind of back into the temple, and they are definitely gone. Uh, just this one is still you can't there's one here um i think you're unable to see it because of the way the walls are drawn but theoretically there still is one on the staircase i'll put him here just so you can see him temporarily i don't necessarily need to know the where i just want to know if i can draw down at those two okay so saruk is confused or maybe terrified that all three of them had us dead to rights and then ran off, but is going to count every blessing he gets. And we're going to stride twice, like, and then five more feet over. Yeah, hell with it. I'll stride three times. And get to there. And that is otherwise my turn. All right, Ruffy. I'm. Um gonna run after them <laughs> <laughs> classic uh so these stairs are difficult terrain then stairs difficult terrain so five fifteen twenty five twenty five yep this one stairs but you got you got like sight on him a little bit this one here is actually up the staircase, but like I've drew, I've drawn the walls incorrectly, so you can't see up the staircase. Okay, so I would have sight on them here from here. Then I would, I would fire. If I could see him, then I would fire from here. He's so he's saying they're up the stairs. This guy's up the stairs. Yep, this one, this guy's right here. So you do have sight on him. Yeah, you have sight on him. Oh well, if I had sight on him from there, I might have actually shot them. Do you mind? Okay, so I'm just gonna really quickly. I had it in my head he was around the corner, like punching Refi. Uh, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna hit this, but never mind. I did everything that did. minus 20 feet of movement. No more cover fire, just a regular strike. All right. Ooh. Hit. That's a 31. But not a crit. Damn. No. Damn. So slow damage. Five points damage. All right, five points of damage, the little plink. That was all three actions? All three actions. Uh, I think Hal's going to delay. See what happens. Okay. On this creature's turn, it kind of like, you look looks back at Refi, like kind of like, puts like, kind of gives you the like gun, like he has you dead to rights, gives you a wink, blows a kiss, and then uh, strides up and out of the room and like into the temple. And you hear like the two that had gone out ahead of him, they're like shooting their guns in the air, their screams as people run for cover and they're like running through the temple. This is our only exit too? This is the only way in or out, yeah. Shit. It's, it's a basement. It's a little like mm -hmm. these are going to suck a basement. And I think, you know, especially in the interest of time, uh, that is kind of like the last thing that we see. What happens like narratively, right, with Ruffy, you want to run after them. I think by the time you get up there, you know, there's no sign of them. Huffing and puffing and carrying on, so going to to keep up with Ruffy, but obviously we will get there first. Um, if I can't find him, I'm going to look for Mentak. Mentakis? Mentakis. Okay. I mean, yeah, um, Mentakis comes, like, there's gunfire, right? So it doesn't take long for the temple to sort of show up. 
they have their own security, their own guards, their own sort of order of monks and stuff that show up to kind of assess the situation and then immediately have like angry looks in your direction and want to grill you guys on what happened. I'm going to point the gun at her and say, how much did he pay you to let them in? Oh, you you point the gun on Mintakis, right? Immediately, there's like a whole like squadron of like monks that go into like this defensive position. Um, you see like around the room, a bunch of the clockworks like stop what they're doing. They all like turn attention to you, kind of pull like their like metal fists. There's like dozens of people in this room that are focused now on Refi holding the gun at Mintakis. Mintakis looks at you. How much? I have no, I have no idea what you're talking about. The bumblebees, damn it. The bumblebees. They, uh, she's, she's claiming to, like, she's saying she has no idea what you're even talking about. I believe her. I see. Make a sense motive check. I think this seems to be a, a good time for Saruk, who is trying to keep up with Refi, to turn the corner, see all of this, <laughs> hear all of that, and roll that. Perfect. Neither one of you believe it. Like the emotion on her face is like fear. You guys have her dead to rights. There's no doubt in your mind that she was involved somehow. Fuck. So How I'm much? guessing looking around, we are very, if we decide to take this decisive, we get killed quickly. Yes, yeah, Steve? Pretty much. I mean, the whole temple here, all, like the security force, everyone in this basement, the nearest people are here. There's dozens of people and clockworks here that you would have to contend with if you did something in this moment. I don't know what you're talking about. Go to my office. We can talk this through, but don't do anything stupid. I glance over at Refi. You can see Refi is like bleeding, furious, breathing heavily. Bit of a glazed look in his eyes still. And he looks over towards you. Fine. Lead the way. It's painfully obvious when... <laughs> Out of character, it would have been really fucking funny to turn the corner and immediately jam no cause for alarm. <laughs> it's just my <laughs> Hang on, hang on. But, 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 I, I definitely don't do that. The, everything is very stressful. Saruk is, like, counting probably... <laughs> Guns. Just you. Anyone who looks through in the face can see that his eyes just dance and dart. There's actually not a lot of firearms. There's a squadron of like what looks to be like some sort of monk archivist protectors, um, and a bunch of clockworks that aren't really armed, but they are sort of just big beefy clockworks. There's no like actual weapons in the immediate vicinity, though. Is the thing. Your office, then. Let's get the rest of ours. I'm sure they'll want to hear it too. Nods, uh, ask the like basically ask the monks to kind of go over and to take Ruffy's firearm from him. Fuck that. Can we come into this? Oh, yeah, yeah. you guys come up at this point. I'm on Wybert after I gave Hal Brent a uh, minor elixir. Hmm. Yeah, you guys come up and Sturk is white knuckling his Giselle. We get attacked in your temple and you're trying to take our weapons away from us. What is up? Why are you taking you his weapons away? You pulled a gun on a cog. I can already have you arrested. You have a license for that thing. Go ahead. Make our day. And in that tense cliffhanger of a moment, I guess that's where we are ending tonight's session with Ruffy refusing to hand over his firearm to a uh, temple full of guards. Wow, that was a that was an intense episode. Um, whew. So yeah, we had like, everything we needed. We had good role play. We had world building. We had character development. We almost fucking died. Yeah, this is an episode of Recall All just actual play of Outlaws of Alcantara. All right, that's yes, right. So that is uh, that's going to do it for us this week in Alcantara. Big thanks to Nina, Richard, Ricardo, Tommy for playing with me. As usual, guys, it's been an honor and fun playing with you. Real quick, before we go, huge, huge shout out to all of our patrons who support us on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Uh, this list is about to... I'll catch it when it starts from the top, but um, give us a look over at patreon.com slash recall knowledge so you can get the time 
look at some of our upcoming content. The list is coming around, so I'm going to read it as it scrolls. Big thanks to David Sims, Jason Irvin, Mark Paquette, Awal Jaleel, Derek Southworth, Ellie Boyle, Jay, Sandra Wagner, and Sam Skaggs. You guys are all awesome. And you guys are all have access to our actual maps, including the asynchronous archives you just saw here. It'll be on our Patreon by the time you watch this video. Such a good um, map. It really map. is. Thanks, that, that is legitimately impressive. I'm really glad that we all took advantage of Ricardo's work, taking cover and not running up. Oh, <laughs> oh man, he yelled so loud he broke up on the transmission. Uh, but big thanks to the Rollsmiths for sponsoring this episode. Check out the new A House Divided Dice set that we use and enter and add that cool glow um, into your game today. Big thanks to Molten Hosting for providing our server hosting and making it so easy. Use that referral code Recall Knowledge. One word. One word. I try to resist your... yelling one word. I don't want to blow the mic out twice. And get your first month for free. Check them out at multinghosting.com. Any other shout outs? I know we're going long, but any other shout outs, guys? Oh, uh, we're going super long. Hi, my name is Tommy. I do a thing on the internet called Black Dragon Gaming, where I do a lot of Pathfinder, first, second, and Starfinder. I'm a professional dungeon master. I Twitch stream sometimes. And here's the link for all of that stuff. It's very late where I am, and I still have to record tonight. Oh, wow. Who knew? <laughs> yeah, go, ch go check out Black Dragon Gaming. Uh, we're going to be back next Wednesday, November 9th at 7 o'clock Pacific to continue the investigation into the Cradle of Quartz. One last thing, guys. Guess what? That's party. That was the end. That was the end of Chapter 1. I want you guys to go ahead and oh. level up between yes! this week and next week. I'm going to do it right now. Between this week and next week, my ass. We are doing it immediately. <laughs> you just said you had to record a video. I don't give a goddamn... I have right. a distraction. Let's... I'll do that instead. Yep. This is this is the end of the the um this the the chapter one and the beginning of chapter two with a little bit of a tense situation that we left off in. So maybe you'll die before you get to use any of your new skills, or maybe just maybe we'll get out of a tight situation. Inside of me, there are two wolves. One wolf wants to know if Rafi and I both fucked up the sense motive really hard, and one really does it because I just wanted the dice and told the story, <laughs> and I'm back and forth, back and forth. Can't wait to shoot Mentakis in the face and fall from grace. <laughs> <laughs> Until next week, everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and goodbye. We'll see you next time. Maybe with new characters. <laughs>